So uh, we'll go ahead and, and call the meeting to order. And I think Jennifer, uh, if you wouldn't mind, call the roll, please. Thank you. Jennifer Swan here. Taylor Fudge. Present. Klaus Ryman Phillip. Present. Alan Brown. <clears throat> Present. Head on view. Sorry. <laughs> Mary Jo Meacham. Present. John Milner. Present. Linda Schultz. Present. Ann Zacharitz. Present. Mr. Chair, you have quorum. Excellent. So the meeting procedures are noted in the agenda that was sent out. Uh, there's a couple things that we do want to discuss in terms of the meeting process. This would be item 1B, um, specifically on certificates of appropriateness. Uh, when an application has been approved and after a 10-day protest period has expired, the Historic Preservation Officer will mail the Certificate of Appropriateness to the applicant. City construction permits cannot be issued until that CA has been issued. And please contact HP staff for final design review inspection or to withdraw items that will not be completed. In regards to the appeals to the Board of Adjustment, any person aggrieved by any decision Granting or denying a CA may appeal to the Oklahoma City Board of Adjustment. All appeals shall be made within 10 days of the commission decision by filing a written, written notice of appeal with the clerk from the Board of Adjustments. That takes us through item 1B. Katie, do we have anything uh, for item 2 from the Office of the Historic Preservation Officer? Um, I'll just note that the June 3rd meeting is at uh, 2 p.m. I think you might have said 9 a.m. and that may be a typo in our materials, um, but that meeting will be at 2 p.m. like 2 our regular meeting. Um, just a few uh, tips and reminders for folks. Uh, again, if you are not currently participating in the discussion of an item, please uh, keep yourself muted during the meeting. And uh, we do have people participating via a phone only. So even though you can see yourself on Zoom, please try to remember to say who you are uh, before you speak so that those who are just listening in can keep track of who is participating. Um, if you have any technical difficulties during the meeting, please um, let us know and staff will try and get those addressed. And Katie, I do have one question, oh. um, if you don't mind. Or do we know already, is the next meeting gonna be uh, virtual like this one or is there plans to be back? Uh, in the in city hall we uh, haven't had any direction on that one way or the other i think we just it's kind of a wait and see mode right now um but we're all kind of assuming that we'll keep going this way for a while so we'll see okay sounds good thank you perfect thank you katie uh let's see next next thing is item number three uh, do any commissioners have any questions have you all had a chance to review the minutes from the march 13th meeting if uh, no questions, do we have a, a motion to accept or modify? Alan Brown, I move we accept the uh, uh, minutes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Do we have a second? second? Uh, Joe Meacham, second. Perfect. Let's see a motion from Alan Brown, Joe Meacham, second. Um, let's see. What do we need to ask if the motion carries now? Is that right, Kitty? Yes, so if um, those that motioned and yep, uh, it was moved by Alan. So if you have made the motion, you should have the opportunity to click to make the motion on your screen and then click second. So Katie, since Chairman Fudge already clicked the move button, um, Jennifer will need to go in and adjust that manually to make it correct. So she'll click Mr. Fudge's name and then change it to uh, Mr. Allen, Mr. Brown's name. Okay. Okay, Joe Meacham to second and my, what was my duty here? Do I click something? In a minute. Sorry? It'll ask you to in a minute. Okay. Moved by Alan, now it should allow, Joe, it should allow you to click to second. Um, got a waiting circle. 
Jennifer, did you click the call movers button? Um, I don't have a call movers button. I have oh, a. No, you, you did. It's on my screen. Yeah, you, 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 I got this motion. Maybe it's just Googling for you. So, what's that one? so in, in this one, Jennifer, since we fixed it, it may not give them the button again. Just go ahead and click Ms. Mejum's name for the second. Okay. And then now they should be able to vote. Okay, you still got to, you, you clicked the voting button. So click beside her name where it has the S. And now click open vote and they should be able to vote. You should all have voting buttons now. Okay, it looks like seven of seven voters are in and the minutes are approved. You guys see that? Jennifer, you have to click close vote for it to display the results. Okay, I did not see a button. Did I just need to hit the. Okay. <laughs> I just didn't see a button. So if you'd like to change my vote in the minutes to approve, that would be fine. Okay. <laughs> and okay. so I'll go ahead, Joe. Okay, minutes are approved. Uh, I think the next thing on our list is code enforcement. Do we have anything to discuss on code enforcement, Katie? Uh, we did not, we don't have a code enforcement report for you this month um, in all of the transition from different types of meetings and different staff position restructuring. Um, we don't have a report attached to your materials. We will get a report out to you prior to the next month. And as always, feel free to contact staff if you have questions about any um, issues that you've observed. Okay, moving to item five. Um, any continuance, continuance announcements or requests? Look like we have one in 5A. We have one request for a continuance. This is to be continued to the June 3rd meeting. And we do need a, a motion and a vote to continue that item. I'll make a motion to continue item HPCA 20-0018 to the June 3rd HP meeting. A second. Excellent, we've got a motion from Klaus Ryman Phillips, a second from Ann Zacharitz. All in favor? I guess we need to vote on live meeting. It looks like there's a little bit of a delay on the uh, voting bar. Mickey? Yes? How do I activate that continuance? Okay, so um, since you edited the text, if you click back on the item itself and then click where it appears under motions, click the little three dots and then click on the vote tab, it should open it back up. I see a motion status, but it's not allowing me to edit it. One moment. Okay. 
Okay, Jennifer, I would just click back over on the item and just do the approved quick motion or the deferred to the deferred quick motion and don't worry about editing it until after the meeting. Is that a new action? Yes. So does that mean you would like us to move to the public hearing section? Uh, no, we still have to pull up the motion for everybody to vote. One, one more. New action. How do I call for a vote from here? Jennifer, um, let me take the control for just a minute to clear this out and start it fresh, okay? Thank you. I apologize. But all right. Okay, so if the person that would move the deferral, go ahead and, okay, and then now the person who seconded it. Okay, you should have your vote buttons now. I do not. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but I'm not seeing. Okay, Ms. Meacham, do you just see the, the white screen? You don't have the whole agenda screen anymore? You are correct. Okay, if you'll press escape on your keyboard. Okay. That should minimize your Zoom so that you can now see the other application again that has your voting buttons on it. Escape. I'm hitting that and that's not changing anything. Okay, what kind of device are you on again? The computer. Okay, at the bottom, do you have a button? Um, I assume you logged in through Chrome, correct? Yes. Okay, do you have, on, down on your start bar, do you have an icon for your Chrome? Yes. If you'll click that, that should bring it up. Okay. Oh, okay, I see it now. I don't know. Okay. Um, I'll try that. Okay, Mr. Chairman, there's your results. Excellent. Uh, let's see, item one, HPCA 200018 has been moved to the June meeting. Okay, Jennifer, you have the controls back. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's see, item six, public hearings, dilapidated structures and national register nominations. Katie, what do we have there? Uh, we have one dilapidated structure, uh, C2018-574, that's the case number for the code enforcement case uh, at 833 Northwest 42nd Street, Crown Heights, Ward 2. Uh, as always with dilapidated structures, we are providing a recommendation to the mayor and city council on whether the structure is historic and contributes to the integrity of the historic district. We are not weighing in on the condition of the structure because that is being evaluated by code enforcement. Uh, this property is in the process of being declared dilapidated following a significant fire. Uh, and we may see you know, future applications for demolition and obviously for reconstruction on the site. But right now we are asked to make a recommendation to council on the historic uh, status of the property. So this, this was a house that burned down and we are not making a recommendation on whether or not to demolish it or declare it dilapidated, just whether or not it contributes to the historic nature of or the historic fabric of the community. Is that accurate? That's correct, yes. Okay. So we need a motion and a vote to provide a recommendation to the mayor and city council. This is Joe Meacham. I would forward, I would make a motion to forward the staff's comments that are in the staff report items one and two. We have a second. Second. Linda so, Schultz, second. Okay. Moved by Joe Meacham, second by Linda Schultz. All in favor, vote on live stream. So Jennifer, okay. if you'll click the call movers, that should give them their buttons to move. 
And then click open vote. And then once all the buttons fill in, click close vote and it will display the results for the chairman. Lost, I think we're waiting for your vote. Oh, I apologize. Thank you. Did you want to say? Okay, motion passed. We will send our recommendation on to the mayor's office. Next item is the National Register nominations. And it looks like we've got two on our list. Katie, do you want to talk to us about those ones? Uh, we have two National Register nominations this month. The first one is for the Villa Teresa Historic District. Um, it's a small district, but it is a district because there are multiple structures. And uh, this nomination is being prepared as part of a historic tax credit project for the property. Uh, I think most people are very familiar with this resource, um, but it is being nominated for its historic significance and architectural significance. It's a rare remaining example of residential development that was once very common in Midtown, Oklahoma City. Um, and we're excited to see this property get nominated to the National Register. You'll find a um, resolution in your staff report, as well as the complete National Register nomination itself. And I believe we have Sarah Wernicke from the Oklahoma State Historic Preservation Office on the call um, in case anyone has any questions. Any, any questions from commissioners or from uh, Katie? Is this one that the general public would weigh in on too? Um, yes, this is a, it's a recommendation to the mayor and city council. So if anyone from the public wanted to speak, they could. Uh, we, I, we also have the um, consultant, Catherine Montgomery, who prepared the National Register nomination if there are questions for her. So we are recommending nomination and then uh, adopting the resolution. Do we have a, a do we have any comments or do we have a, a motion? And that can be just one motion. Ellen Brown, I move we recommend the nomination, adopt the resolution as part of the provided in staff report. Do we have a second? Linda Schultz, All second. Excellent. Moved by Alan Brown, seconded by Linda Schultz. All in favor, please vote. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't I don't think I clicked anything, but maybe. Is that a coup? Yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't think I clicked. I don't know how that happened, but anyway. Can I let him do that? Can I just say okay? Can we let Can we let Klaus that, second I think that? That's fine. Perfect. Klaus seconded I'm as in, well. I'm okay to second. Yeah. So. Yep. Sorry, Linda. It's okay. You can get the next one, Linda. <laughs> that's like. Uh, Excellent. Motion passed, and we will forward that nomination on along with the resolution. I learned a lot from reading this. You know, I didn't. I really didn't know all that history. It's really interesting. This is Sarah Bernke with the Shippo, and I thank you for doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see. We have one more. Um, let's see. N R H P twenty zero 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 two. Um, similar circumstances, any questions from commissioners, any citizens that wish to be heard? 
No, but I'll, I'll just note that, that uh, this is uh, this is Katie. Um, this is a nomination that we prepared ourselves in house. Um, HP staff worked on this one. Um, the neighborhood um, has been very supportive of pursuing this. We also had some uh, student volunteers early on that helped with the survey effort, and it's been a great team effort with um, with our staff and with SHPO staff. Uh, this is the only HP district in the city that's not also on the National Register. So really excited to see this. Uh, completed. Very cool. I had a question. Yes, Linda. Katie, was part of that process, um, did you uh, survey the homeowners in the neighborhood I, and I missed it or is that not required? I just was sort of curious that it was, there was no, um, at least I couldn't find anything where you surveyed the property owners. Um, what do you mean by survey, Linda? I don't know if there was any, any kind of, was there an opportunity for them to respond or, I mean, I was, I was interested in what the neighborhood input was. Of um, we had, a, we had a meeting early on with Heritage Hills East as we started this process to um, make them aware that we were going to okay. work on getting the neighborhood listed. Um, there was another meeting a few months ago with the um, what is now a combined neighborhood association uh, in Heritage Hills and Heritage Hills East mm -hmm. to tell them about the progress of the project. Um, and there was notice published in the journal record about the National Register nomination because it's more than 50 property owners. So that's the requirement. Thank you. Yep. Do we have a motion on this particular item? And this is Linda Schultz, and I'll uh, recommend that we support and forward the nomination of Heritage Hills East Historic District to the Mayor and City Council, the Oklahoma Historic Preservation Review Committee, and the State Preservation Officer and the Keeper of the National Register, and adopt, adopt the resolution as provided as part of the staff report. I'll second. This is Ann Zacherts. Perfect. Motion moved by Linda Schultz, seconded by Ann Zacharitz. Please vote on the live stream. Prime Gov. Oh, I'm sorry. There's a delay, so I just saw a green box and I thought it was vote, and uh, I guess it was still move on mine. So I'm uh, screwing this process up. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. <laughs> Foss is just trying I'm to take a... Linda's Linda's motions again. Can we? <laughs> can we have? Can we have that motion made by Klaus and seconded by, by Ann? Is that okay, Jennifer? No, well, I think we're resetting it. That's good. Okay. There we go. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Klaus, take your finger off the mouse button. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so also the move and second is a box and the buttons will be big round circles. Okay, that motion is passed as well. It will be recommended for nomination and the resolution will be sent on to the mayor's office. This is Sarah Monahegan. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sarah. Appreciate your efforts. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. Okay, let's see. Item moving on to let's see item 6C. Anything in the consent docket cases that the commissioners might want to pull and look at? Do I have to pull it to ask a question on one? No, you can ask a question and we can just respond to that. And then if you need to pull it, we can do that. Okay, on uh, 34, six, which was is 600 Northwest 14th Street, is the driveway 20 feet apart? I mean, 20 feet wide? Um, In the driveway? Yes, it is proposed at uh, 20 feet wide. Yeah. Well, then yeah, I guess I want to pull it. Unless it, it, unless you want to it, it, tell me kind of how you got to, that was okay. Um, I believe it matches the width of the garage door opening. 
Um, you've got two uh, garage doors and then a two foot wide center post. And then at the street, you know, a portion of wall to either side of the garage. So it's this, I believe it is the same width as the garage door, uh, the at two the garage curb. door opening. Okay, but at the curb, it's 20 feet wide? Off the street? Um, I it is, I believe it is 20 feet wide at the property line. Um, but eight feet at the yeah, street? Yeah, it's, it's 20 feet wide at the curb and, and not including the, um, the radius. And typically when we see those side street garages that are so close to the street, the driveway is usually the same. You know, we usually don't have those taper the way one does when it's behind the house where you have a narrow driveway going up and then wide fanning out behind the house. So it's 20 feet from the property line, the garage is. Oh, yes, yes. It is set back 20 feet from the property line and then uh, whatever the distance is from the property line to the, the curb, which looks like it's 10 feet. So it's more like an apron to the garage, like some of those on the side street. Okay, I'm, I'm okay with that. I just wanted to be sure that I understood given the requirements that we've been fairly true to on driveways uh, from the street. But yes. I understand what it is now. Thank you. Yes. Um, Jennifer, I think we want to click on um, at the top on um, consent docket cases C to record a motion and a vote for that entire set of um, items. Does that seem right? So do we have anybody that will make a motion to approve items one through five and, and the consent docket cases? I move we approve the consent docket. Alan Brown. Do we have a second? I'll second. This is Ann Zacharitz. Excellent. Moved by Alan Brown, second by Ann Zacharitz. Please vote on PrimeGov. If Alan does move quickly, I'm going to have to move it. I figured you just done it anyways. Commissioner Schultz, it looks like we're waiting for your vote. Excellent. Motion passes. Anybody with a anybody that's on the call that was in the consent docket is free to go unless you want to stick around for the rest of this HP meeting. Thank you. Okay, so we'll move on to item D, cases for individual consideration. Start with HPCA 19-00141 at 805 Northwest 41st Street. This is an application for consideration of possible action on an application of Joshua Jones for certificate of appropriateness to number five install driveway gate elective. This is a proposal that the commission saw um, previously uh, and wanted to get verification from the property owner of the height of the neighboring gate uh, because it is a proposal to have two driveway gates adjacent to each other with matching heights on what is uh, similar to a shared driveway. Uh, they, the applicant has indicated that the neighboring gate is uh, six feet, um, six inches tall. The proposed gate is uh, arched and illustrated to reach six foot 10 at the center. So they're trying to match that neighboring gate with the design. Um, staff recommended approval with unique circumstances addressing the similar gate heights at the um, adjacent property. Is Mr. Jones present and, or, or somebody representing Mr. Jones and would he like to speak or do we have any questions from commissioners? Oh, I'm Catherine Lindsay. I'm the other um, occupant of this residence. So I'm here if anyone has any questions. Is 805 the house on the right? 
in the picture? Correct. The goal is just to match the gate on the left. Katie, this is Joe Meacham. Have you met with the, or discussed this with the applicant and um, have uh, documentation that will go along with this, with the conditions? Or are you waiting for, are you going to be, or, or is turning in the, the final documentation a part of the uh, uh, approval process? Uh, I believe turning in that final documentation showing that the gate would replicate the abutting gate is something we would get from them prior to release of a CA if this is approved. Uh, when it says replicate, are we asking them to make an exact replica or is staff going to approve something other than an exact replica? Um, that would be at the commission's discretion to um, direct the applicant as far as how um, how accurate you want that. If you want something that's just the same height, similar style, or if you want it to be an exact match. Uh, well, I'm reading your the conditions noted in the staff report, and it says the proposed gate replicate the abutting gate in such that there's an appearance of a matching pair. If that's what the applicant is agreeing to do, I would make a motion. Is the applicant yes. an, agreeing to do that? Yeah, I mean, that's accurate. Okay. Okay. This is Angela. The only difference proposed is actually the height of the gate so that the top of the arch will match the top of the arch at the abutting property. There's a slight difference there. Otherwise, the homeowner has proposed an exact replication. Okay. Thank you, Angela. Uh, I would make a motion to approve HPCA 1900141. Um, with the specific findings as noted by the staff in the staff report, the conditions recommended, and the unique circumstance stated in the staff report. We have a second. This is Anne. Second. Anne, was that a second from you? Yes. Excellent. So moved by Mary Jo Meacham, second by Ann Zacharitz. All in favor? Motion passes. Ms. Lindsay, enjoy your new gate. Okay, moving on to item two, HPCA 2000014 at 1700 North Robinson Avenue. This is in Heritage Hills East, Ward 6, consideration of possible action on application of Scott Henderson, OPM Realty, for certificate of appropriateness to one install can LED lights at third floor, uh, third story soffit elective. And uh, the commission saw this application previously and we have not received any additional um, information or revisions from the applicant. So uh, staff has recommended a continuance at this time. Is the applicant on present and on the call today? Potentially muted. I don't believe I saw the applicant um, join the meeting. Uh, if someone did want to speak on this, uh, they can unmute. Uh, we did. You also did receive comments from the neighborhood that um, concurred with staff's recommendation. Any... And um, we can continue to the uh, July one meeting um, because we have not communicated with this applicant to allow them time to respond. This is Joe Meach, and I would make a motion to continue item HPCA 2000014 to the July 1st meeting. Do we have a second? I'll second. This is Ann Zacharitz. Moved by Joe Meacham, seconded by Ann Zacharitz. Please vote.
Taylor, I accidentally clicked the second button before Ann said her thing. <laughs> so she segmented. Looks like the motion passes. And we will move this to the July, we'll continue this to the July 1st meeting. Okay, item three, HPCA 200021 at 600 Northwest 17th Street. This application is in Mesta Park, Ward 6. Consideration and possible action on application by Holly Hunt, Sam Gresham Architects, for Pat Salome for certificate of appropriateness to one, construct rear addition elective, two, construct covered rear porch elective, and three, con reconstruct wraparound portion of front porch elective. Uh, Holly Hunt is, I believe, on the call today. Uh, to speak to any questions you may have. The commission has seen this application previously. Revisions have been made to the proposed um, addition in or, and back porch in response to the commission's comments. Uh, and staff recommended approval for the, um, the rear addition and for the construction of the back porch with the um, attached revisions and recommended continuance for the reconstruction of the front porch as we still don't have um, the details of the um, showing that it was historically a wraparound porch. Holly, are you on, on the line here? Yes, Holly? I'm here. I'm here. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, Angela is currently showing the old, um, I, I have an updated fly around yeah. of the 3D model showing the new. Collins, so I'm, yep. I'm looking at I'm looking at the handout we got. What changes good. did you make? Make it looks like you reduced the amount of brick on the columns. Yes, yes. we did it. We went with the more traditional um, uh, wood tapered wood column with just a smaller brick space. Again, to show that it's secondary to that first. I mean, the, my feeling was that the mass, too, of the brick was what um, was another part of the reduction. So that wood and those brick column bases got much smaller. Any other changes? <clears throat> um, Angela, can you hear me? We're, we're yes, struggling to, to hear you real well, Holly. No, not at this time. We, we reduced that, um, reduced the columns and tend to get it. But I don't feel like the porch is all that. Hey, Holly, you're cutting out. Yeah. And it looks like the screen is frozen too. This is Linda Schultz. Uh, Katie, can you speak to the differentiation and the is that better? information on the materials? I'm sorry, guys. My internet cut out there for a while. Uh, I, 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 I don't know what you guys are, where you're at. I'm sorry. Holly, I, I didn't hear much of, of the previous explanation, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, just kind of walking through what changes were made from the first to the second revision, please. Okay. Sorry, my internet is giving me some trouble. And um, what we did in response to the commissioner's um, uh, comments a couple of months ago was reduce the size of the columns um, by, oh, not, not a terrible lot because we still want it to look um, similar to the front porch, but again, they're scaled down and we went with the brick base with tapered wood um, upper portion of the columns. And uh, again, just to be secondary to that front porch. And, and I have, I had updated the fly around and I'm, I'm not sure why that's not, um, included in the presentation today, but um, that would help to, you can of the white um, painted wood. So it's a much reduced version. 
Well, we, we do. I'm have sorry a, about that, Holly, but the commission does. I'm sorry, this is Angela. Have oh. your uh, 11 by 17 with your new design. Okay, great. So, so you have seen the 3D model. Then. Okay. Yes, we've gotten our packet. Make... We've gotten our packet, as I as I as I said. Is that the only change? The columns. Correct. Okay. So I I will tell you I I haven't been able to get over to the site until just uh, this week, um, due to all this. But um, I got pictures as well as dimensions that show um, an exist an old capstone cap that used to. Maybe she should come come, come in on the phone. We do have images that Holly has provided of uh, the capstone cap that she's mentioning from the um, proposed extension of the front porch. Uh, we didn't get those in time to make them available, but she has shared those with staff. Um, and it does appear to be the same uh, style of a capstone cap and same dimensions as the, the ones currently existing on the front porch. The front porch, just like the back porch. Now the back porch is just like the front porch. No. The, the the back porch has um, the simpler wood columns sitting on top of a low brick base, uh, and that was revised from the first proposal. And the front porch would install a new brick column matching the existing columns to extend the front porch across and connect to the side porch. We okay. have evidence that at one time those that porch was built that way um, because again the piece of cast stone as well as ind indication on the brick that at one time that was all covered. So we want to restore that connection, that little wraparound porch. Uh, this is Holly. Yes. This is Jimmy. I just would like to say that. Um, I, you know, I, 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 I agree with staff on everything. The only thing that I think that um, uh, I would like to say is that we depend on you being a professional that you, you, that you 100% feel that you have documentation. And I would just like to request that you either uh, provide, make sure that you write something up, uh, some kind of documentation with maybe a description, pictures, that you put in the folder, or that we have a file in the future, that uh, that you know you and your firm have determined that um, you feel confident that there is uh, proof that there was this. Point. And if you if you can do that, then uh, I, I I feel like that even though we it's uh, we don't have photos, that if you all are going to um, submit information confirming that you think professionally that there was um, that porch there, then I would um, be in, a, in favor of the project. So you, uh, Commissioner Meacham, you're saying that you would approve it with the condition that uh, evidence supporting that that porch was there prior to right. I mean what I hear Holly saying is that they feel like they have evidence with the capstone and the uh, indentions on the side of the house and, and whatever. But I think that I would just like to make sure that when they, in the final submittal, that if they want to write it in the form of a, of a short report and just say, these are the items that we found and we feel confident that there was something there, I will take that. Um, if staff is, uh, I mean, that, that I would I would take that information, but I think they already have it. I just want to make sure that it is a part of the application, that it is clear that they found these things, saw these things, and that's the reason they feel confident they should they should uh, they could build it back. Well, then I'm confused on exactly. Did they find that that? back porch looks like what they are proposing to rebuild. They, this is Angela. Mm -hmm. oh, go ahead. Um, Linda, I think that you and Joe are talking about two different porches. 
the infill of the front porch, I believe, if this is accurate, Holly, is the is being indicated by the concrete top, yes. whereas the back porch is a different that's item. That's what I was talking about. Sorry, that's Jeff. what I'm talking about. Okay. The front porch. Okay. The recreation, Linda. Is that what you're talking about? No, I was really talking about the back porch. So the back porch okay. is a completely new design, and I I feel like with the direction that the that the commission gave uh, them last time that they completed, uh, that they made those changes. That's what I would comment on the back porch. And have, uh, Holly, have y'all talked any more about the differentiation uh, consideration in the report? This is uh, really cool, so. Yeah, um, so the, we delineate among old and new on the west side of the house with a piece of vertical trim board, very similar to what we have um, currently on the corners of the home. It'll be about the same dimension and it will run to delineate the addition. The porch itself is delineated um, because it's really just kind of tacked onto the back. We have minimal changes to the existing rear wall. Um, so, in and of its, I mean, it makes it a difference because it's, it's not, it, it's literally just tacked onto that facade. So there's a clear delineation of what's porch and what's house. Uh, I mean, what about it's on the corner of the house? Um, I'm sorry? The addition, mm -hmm. the two story addition. Delineation of materials or delineation of the addition? That, that, yeah, we have a vertical trim board um, where that on the west wall where the addition begins. Thank you. Uh, Linda, there is also a, a break in the roof line that um, assists in indicating that it's an addition. Addition has been, um, the staff has uh, suggested or recommended approval for that. Is, is, are we, I feel like we've fulfilled all those requirements for delineation. Any other questions? We have a motion that we would like to make. This is Joe Meacham. I would make a motion. Um, I would make a motion to approve uh, HPCA 200021 item one with the conditions and the specific findings as noted in the staff report uh, to approve item two with the conditions and the specific findings as noted in the staff report and to approve item three with the specific findings uh, noted in the staff report items one, two, four, and five with the condition that uh, uh, condition with one condition that evidence of the existing existence of the wraparound porch should be provided. Thank you, Commissioner Meacham. Do we have a second? I second that, Alan Brown. Excellent. Moved by Mary Jo Meacham, second by Alan Brown. All in favor? Motion is passed. Thanks, Holly. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. You too. Okay, moving on to item number four, HPCA 200022 at 801 Northwest 17th Street. This is in Mesa Park Ward 6, consideration and possible action on application by Jamie Allen, Blue Haven Pools for James Pickens for certificate of appropriateness to one, install pool, spa, and mechanical equipment elective, and two, install new fence elective 
The Commission has seen this application previously as well. Uh, the applicant submitted some additional materials regarding their um, site plan and fence location. Uh, and I will note that we realized uh, the staff recommendation um, under E2 was intended to say uh, recommend approval with the specific findings and uh, unique circumstances that are, are written below. Um, this is one that is at an unusually shaped um, and configured lot, so the fence does not meet um, the letter of the guidelines, but staff felt that the condition of the lot warranted um, approval. Excellent. Do we have a citizen to be heard in regards to this particular application? Uh, yes, this is uh, Jim Pickens. I'm the homeowner. Uh, 801 Northwest 17th Street. Phone number is 405-820-8461. And I guess, I guess the only thing I'd add, add to this, just as you're talking about this, you may want to show them the aerial view if you've got it in there, Katie, because that was... That was one thing they're kind of wondering about with the fence position on the east side of the house. I believe we only have the photos in the PowerPoint, but they do have all of the attachments in their uh, packet okay. that came with the staff report. So they'll have that in their materials. Okay. And do any of the committee members have any questions about the uh, east fence line and the aerial view and where it's positioned? Uh, Joe Meacham, I just have one question. Um, uh, since staff missed, uh, since the abutting property is mentioned more than once, have you had a discussion with your neighbor? And is there, um, uh, are they in, a, are they, uh, they haven't sent in a protest. Are they uh, approved? Are, do they approve of what you're proposing? Yes. 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 It's, uh, her name is Sharon Stroud. She has lived there probably for 25 years. She doesn't have any issue issue with it at all uh, as far as I know I mean I could get written written consent from her if you need it uh, again the other thing I'd point out um, what you guys have in your packets is that it literally realized that this is literally a full lot between uh, the north abutting property and my property that's split in half so I have one half they have the north property has the other half so I mean it's quite a bit of distance between the two houses um, at which you can really appreciate on aerial views. Yeah, I've, I've driven by this house. I drive by it on my way home every every day from work. And it, it, it is definitely on a, a strange, it has a strange property line. There's seems like there's plenty of room uh, there to, to put in a pool. And my guess is the neighbor wants to come over and go swimming. So she's probably supportive of it as well. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, Katie, are you saying that um, there is a typo on the staff report and that item two should say approve? Yes. Okay. Yep, we just didn't get it changed. We changed the findings, I think, but not the actual word. Uh, well, I would make a motion to approve HPCA 20-00022 items one and two with the Specific findings as noted in the staff report by, and uh, the, let's see, uh, there's a, a request for additional information to be turned in under item one and then also with the unique circumstances as listed. We have a second. I'll second, this is Ann Zacherts. Excellent, moved by Mary Jo Meacham, seconded by Ann Zacherts. All in favor, please. Vote. I lost the button there for a second. <laughs> okay, motion passed. Thank you okay. so much. All right, thanks a lot. Okay, next item, HPCA 2000023 at 931 Northwest 18th Street. This is in Mesta Park, Ward 6, consideration and possible action on application of John and Allison Macapur for certificate of appropriateness to one, replace existing garage doors at front elective, two, install garage doors and opening on the rear of the garage elective, 
three, replace gate at driveway and two other openings in the fence wall elective, and four, widen opening in retaining wall at driveway elective. And I believe uh, the property owner is on uh, the call today. Um, I know we have several other folks from uh, the neighborhoods on, so uh, we want to make sure that they're um, able to speak if they had a concern about any of these. Um, and this, just as everyone's getting um, looking at the item, it's a proposal to uh, modify the garage so that they can access the garage from both their driveway and from the alley, and to widen the opening uh, in the retaining wall so that they can access the driveway and the garage. It looks like all of the notes from the neighbors were in support of, of all of this work. I didn't see anything in here, I didn't think, that indicated otherwise. Is that accurate? That is accurate. Um, we uh, Staff recommended continuance on the garage door opening at the rear of the garage, and that was only uh, as a way to raise the commission's awareness that this would be the first um, alley access garage on that block, as far as we know it. Uh, minimally visible from the front of the building, but it would be visible off the side street and from the alley. Um, so just wanting to make everyone aware of that change to the nature of the property. So, so Katie, does that mean that we need to just be mindful or aware of, you know, what, the, what precedence this might set in terms of um, entering and, and exiting the alleyway or I guess, yes. you know, and yes. the configuration of garage doors within that alleyway? Yes. If I may, um, th this is actually not the first alley uh, approach on our block. Um, in the same alley, five houses down, there's a rear facing garage. It's almost identical from the other street, Francis, as we are from Ollie. We're about 95 feet from Ollie. This is about 103 feet from Francis. Visible, it's on 907 Northwest 18th. So we would not be setting a new precedence. We're more or less following the historic precedence of the alleyway. And I'll just comment, um, you know, we have so few alleys left in Oklahoma City. I feel, um, you know, they're a great resource. And so I think, um, I think it makes a lot of sense uh, to access the alley if you have that option. We, we have planted about 40 trees in our alley to try to make the alleyway more beautiful and uh, not so much of a dump and more of a, a place where people can jog and walk and walk their dogs. We'd like our alleyway to be part of the neighborhood. Joe Meacham, do you have, um, are, are you rebuilding the front doors also? We're, we're, we're renovating in kind. We are not changing anything. We're, we're just, they, they look like they're original and have never been renovated. And we're just gonna build them a replica basically of what's there, but more functional. I would, I mean, my request, I'm, I'm not opposed to it, but I would request that we have um, um, drawings that are um, measured drawings with uh, the doors, the original doors on there, with the original doors drawn, with specific measurements uh, of the doors and the materials, um, and before work is done, and that, and that what I, what I see you saying is that the back doors are going to be built to match those. So I just feel like that the drawing that was turned in, it doesn't, it, it doesn't have any measurements um, and it doesn't really specify the materials. So I would just request that uh, proper documentation be submitted prior to uh, starting the project. Yes, ma'am. I, I sat down with Angela several times uh, and I was under the impression that we, we had turned in what was required, but I'd be happy to do that. I just, I just feel like for the record, since you are indicating you feel like they're original, that it would be in everybody's interest. Let's say, and, and the purpose for this would be, let's say that uh, you finish your whole project and it burns down the week after, uh, you know, we would not have any uh, evidence uh, that we could have had if you would have had some drawings. So that that's kind of my 
uh, interest in this is that I feel like that we have an opportunity to make sure that um, you always have a reference or you, I'm saying the owner, whoever it is in the future has the ability to uh, know exactly what these doors look like. So that would be my condition if I made a motion. Are you yes, in agreement? John, okay. I've, got a I've got a question, Alan Brown. Yes, sir. Uh, looking at the staff report, it says, replace existing garage doors at the front. It sounds like you're gonna rebuild them. Well, yes. You're not replacing yeah. them with new doors. You're gonna rebuild the existing doors? No, we're gonna build doors to match the existing ah. doors. Yes, no, the, the wood is rotten. There is no uh, well, recouping these doors. Well, you said they were, you thought they were original. I would be amazed if they were able to be you know, rebuilt. Uh, no, they've been sitting in water. The, the wood is, is not salvageable, but we're going to rebuild the doors with the same materials to look exactly like the current doors. So there's no information on here on the, are, are these custom doors? Or are they by a certain a manufacturer? There's no information on, a, on the door. They, they will have to be built custom. Yes. And, and I believe we put that into the, the CA proposal. Well, I, I didn't see anything exactly. Is it, are they going to be overhead doors? These look like they're they're uh, swinging doors, or yes, we're, we're gonna we're gonna it's gonna be the same look, same materials, but they will open overhead rather than uh, they actually slide. Uh, currently, they don't slide. swing, but but they yeah. will be overhead. Yes, so sir. they're going to be sectional overhead doors, and you're going to apply uh, to the face the doors to make them look like the ones that exist that are existing? That's exactly right. That, that's my, uh, Alan, that, Joe Meacham again. I, that's my concern. It's just that it, I, I'm with, it, it, it's really not clear what's going to be rebuilt in the, in the application um, says re, uh, replace the existing sliding garage doors, but it doesn't say what you just explained the owner just explained. So they could look a lot different. I mean, they may, you may have to make changes in order to make them an overhead door. I mean, is it going to be a, a totally custom? I mean, if it's going to. Yes, totally a custom. door is completely different than an overhead door because it has to be done in sections and it's going to go up. It's going to be a different size. So I think that um, we need, if we need an exact drawing. I think we have a lot, I mean, excuse me, <laughs> documentation on those doors. I know it can be done where you apply basically wood trim to make them look panelized like the ones you've got. But uh, I think we need to have more information on that. I don't have a problem. This is Katie. Um, we, we, staff can check to see uh, but after the meeting if we had any additional documentation from the applicant. If you all are comfortable with uh, in concept, a replacement in kind of the door, except for the conversion to an overhead door, then we can work with the applicant to get more detailed drawings of what that's going to look like. And obviously, if the completed drawings are dissimilar from what's there now, we could bring that back to the commission for further review. I guess that I'm kind of struggling with what's, who's, what's dissimilar. Um, because we don't have anything to refer to. My understanding is that it will be um, a replica of the existing doors, except that you will have seams where it can break into sections like an overhead door. Uh, and so if it was something somehow different from that, if the proportions were changing uh, the material, uh, we would bring that back. I. I think that that I, I would prefer to to uh, continue. I think that um, I think it is going to look different, and that we need to see it. Would that would that mean I would have it built prior to this? No, you, we just need a drawing of what it's going to look like because there's no way that I mean there's just no way it's going to look exactly like that. And I, and the the. Uh, the application implies that it's going to look exactly like that, but there's no drawings really to indicate um, 
Okay. What, what the final result is going to be. It's not going to be like you've taken the, the, and particularly now you've said you think it's original. So basically we're, we're removing the exist. I mean, we're de demolishing the existing doors and starting over. That's totally different than replicating or uh, doing whatever it's, however it was stated in the uh, application that you were be replacing the existing to match. So, hey, I I'm also on Philip here. I don't want to get um, too deep in the woods, but I believe that there are um, kind of mounting options or tracks where you could have a solid panel door that still goes overhead um, that right. doesn't have that panel, you know, that panelized look. So maybe, uh, you know, to kind of um, build on what you're saying, maybe some options like that can be explored, um, you know, some different track options or something to where you could kind of maintain the same, you know, door uh, character, even maybe not breaking it and keeping it a solid piece, um, but finding some different hardware maybe on how to mount that overhead, so. Also, are you suggesting a single door that lifts vertically? I feel like I've, I feel like, correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like I've seen, um, I've seen tracks or hardware that can kind of um, allow for that. Well, they also, I was assuming that the applicant was proposing a sectional overhead door with applied uh, wood facing to mimic the existing door. That's what I assume. And we've approved that before. I believe we've approved that before. Yeah. And we were going to lean on Jeff Blake for the technical expertise, but, but our goal is to have the materials and the look of the current doors, uh, but with healthier yeah. wood. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not opposed to it. I just feel like that we, that we don't have enough documentation. I, no. you know, that's all I, that's all I'm saying. And it, and it is replacing the two doors. So that would yes, be good. So to me, it sounds like we're moving towards a continuance. Is there anything in the in the application that we could approve? We've got gates and um, widening some retaining walls, things of that nature. Or is it, is it I speak to Joe's item real quickly? Go for it. Uh, in the past, Joe, it's true that we have been able to take what was originally a solid door and section it and replicate, you know, to to the millimeter the design that was originally there. And, and as Katie was referencing, if you can get comfortable with it, we can very much photograph dimension and, and very perfectly replicate the pattern of the door that's there now. And, and you have in the past approved section doors that were once original solid slab. I, I, I'm not opposed. I'm not opposed. It's just that we, it, it is different than what it states in the, in the, in the, in the in the proposal and i just want to see i mean we're we always make people show us exactly what the doors are going to look like sure i mean whether they are there and they're replicating them or not we need to um because once they're gone once you take them off and throw them in you know and they're gone then nobody is going to have the opportunity to say other than a photograph yeah they look like that so uh, we just need a I agree. We just need a drawing. And, and so, and I agree with that. I think that does need to be documented. My request for John's benefits that he can move forward is that that drawing before it's approved be produced and be uh, blessed by Katie and Angela because I, I believe they, their eyes are qualified to see uh, what that drawing is, what's on site and, and to move that on down the road versus waiting a whole nother month. Would that, would that be- is it is it going to be a folding door or a panel door that has like four sections? I think it would be a section door and, and we've done that before and that'd be acceptable. I, I, I'm not opposed to that. I'm not saying we haven't done it before. I'm saying sure. that I, I don't feel comfortable when, when it says that we're replicating the existing door and right. it's going to be that different. I don't think that's a sliding door and a, and a, and a panel door are different. I'm not saying it won't be approved. I'm just saying that sure. I feel I don't feel comfortable approving that. And I think it's, I personally think it's a little different, too different for staff to, I, I'd rather that part of the, of the proposal come back to the commission, but. I would I'll, be, I would be okay with approving the concept because we, we have approved it before and allow the staff to 
uh, review and approve the drawing. That's all I ask. I mean, we're not getting anything by anyone. Katie and Angela would be looking at this and, and I've worked with them enough to, to know that if we represented it correctly and they could verify it, that administratively it could be passed on and, and we'd allow this homeowner to, to move on with his work. So are the, is, are the plans not in progress or for the, I mean, are the drawings for the new uh, doors not somewhere in, I mean, are we interrupting progress beyond the drawings? Yeah, I mean, I think the drawings could be generated in a week's time, uh, turned in quickly uh, versus waiting for the next, you know, if it's continued. And so, you know, this helps the homeowner with his timeline. It's just that we normally have plans. Yeah. yeah. The other would be approved. I mean, you didn't, I know you didn't uh, send, you didn't turn in the first drawing. Right. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little confused if you were doing the project and we knew that we'd have to have drawings, then I think that, that a drawing should have been submitted of some sort and then maybe we could have gone from there, but um, somebody can make a motion and go with it. So do we have a, a commissioner willing to make a motion at this point? Well, don't we have a few more items here to discuss? Um, adding the garage doors on the back of the garage involves garage doors that match the ones on the front of the garage. So that item probably hinges on uh, approval of the replacement of the historic garage doors, uh, whether, whether the motion is to approve those with a submittal to staff or to continue those. Um, we do have a recommendation for approval for replacing the gates and widening the opening at the driveway. Well, just my two cents, I, you know, I, I do feel like, uh, I mean, Katie and Angela have a lot of expertise in this. Um, and, and we do have the existing gate um, to go off, you know, we have the, you know, we have the images of it, um, you know, Katie and Angela could go out there and look at it if they felt they needed to. So I, I feel confident that Katie and Angela, if, if there was anything that they were concerned about, you know, if, if they thought anything might be, uh, out of the ordinary or, or not um, what was represented today that, that they would send it back to the next meeting. Just my two cents. What, uh, what is going to be the, the width of the new gate? The driveway gate would be eight and a half feet wide. Eight and a half feet. Okay, it says it's going to be wide. What's existing gate then? I think the existing mm -hmm. gate is the chain link fence that they have now. Was that? It, it doesn't look, uh, it looks. He's saying the new gate is going to be eight and a half feet. The existing gate looks like 10 feet or something. No, the existing gate won't allow a car to go through. Let me, uh, I'm looking for my. Uh, Might be seven. Um, they used to do driveways seven feet wide, believe it or not. <laughs> we're, we're shooting for making it 18 inches wider. So we're, we're not making a huge difference, but we that, just. Yeah. So maybe seven to eight and a half is what you're talking about. Uh, that eight and a half feet, that is the uh, city minimum for a uh, parking spot as well. So that's probably about, I would say the minimum you'd wanna make it for, uh, for a gate. And the design is gonna be similar to the back gate. Yes, matching. Matching. And that would be pretty hard to draw. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, Joe Meacham, we, I mean, we, we, we generally have, you know, more information as far as sizes and so forth. And it is the gate that you're showing, is it a, a custom gate? It's not purchased. And so there's no specifications that you could, or manufacturer specifications. It's a custom gate. Uh-huh. Is, 
is the when you widen the gates is it a it's a concrete block wall so you're going to widen that and then refurbish it the yes ma'am yes ma'am I, I believe not i believe the, the goal is to keep the current concrete wall and just cut it down 18 inches shorter And I apologize about the documentation. Uh, this is my first time. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. I'm not. I'm not trying to be hard on you or anything. But it, it's difficult because we're trying to. I, you know, we're trying to make sure that uh, we know exactly what's going to happen, so that when you do it, um, there's no um, uh, that everybody knows what it was going to be, and somebody doesn't say, "Well, I thought it was going to be this way, and I thought it was going to be that way." We don't have anything to compare it to if well, we don't have yeah. documentation. The other thing that's been that's been uh, I've been reminded of preparing these is that we're also uh, wanting documentation so so uh, there's no um, uncertainty when the inspector goes out to make sure that you complied with the CA. If there's no drawing and there's no dimension, they're just you know mm -hmm. they don't have anything to uh, check. And I assume the building permit will also want more information. So. A drawing would be required. Um, yes, sir. You know, I, I sat down in Angela's office at least four times looking over these drawings, um, doing my best uh, uh, to, to, to give you the information you needed, but I'd be happy to get more. This yes, is Angela. Mr. McAfee is correct. He did spend quite a bit of time in my office, but he had to do some traveling. Um, I do have an email response from Mr. McFour that indicates that the actual current width of the driveway gate is 104 inches by 72 inches tall. And the site plan that he provided at that time is in your packet. And his original proposal was to increase the width of the opening by 18 inches. So that puts the final width of the opening at 122 inches. Joe, you're on mute. We just discussed how that we thought it was gonna be eight and a half feet. So eight and a half and a, I, I'm, now I'm not really sure how wide the final one will be. It'd be 10 feet. So 10 feet is different than eight and a half. I, I thought we were going from, anyway. First, I mean, a minute ago we said it was too small to get a car through, so we'd have to go to eight and a half feet. But now, uh, and I see that marked on a drawing, it just says 100 feet, 104 feet wide. That's the existing. Then we're adding 18. So I just don't, I, I just think it's, we need to have a little clarification. That's my but now there's a lot of confusion i i second that i, I think we need some drawings yeah i would agree with commission meeting i would make a motion to continue hpca uh 20 to the uh, july 1st meeting uh, we can also do oh, June 3rd, 3rd, in which case oh, they would need new documentation to us by May 12th. Oh, okay. I thought you said we couldn't do that one. Okay. Um, June 3rd. That. That's I'll, second fine. That. I'll second that motion. That's Alan. Motion. Let's see. Motion made by Joe Meacham, seconded by Alan Brown. All in favor, please vote. See the motion passed. We are going to continue this to the June 3rd meeting, seeking more documentation on this particular project. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, to, 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 to be clear, I need pictures drawn of the garage doors and better measurements of the gate opening. Is that correct? Uh, are, are, there, no. are, are there more documentation besides those two things that I missed? Plans for the new garage doors? 
I'm sorry, I missed documentation that. on the new garage doors. Documentation I, on the new garage doors and pictures of the old garage doors. I mean, yes, the, we would want um, drawings or photos of the existing doors labeled with measurements, either drawings or photos labeled with me measurements to accurately document the existing doors and then drawings the of the doors, doors that are to be built so that we can compare the two and then accurate an accurate um, site plan or elevation showing the changes to the width of the driveway opening for the gate. Elevations are always nice because you can get out, you can get the height and you can get the width of the opening and you can kind of get a good feeling for uh, what's proposed. Okay. And, and, and the pit. I think we lost you. John, did we? Okay. okay. Um, so the pictures of the front of the garage. Mr. McApore, we are losing you, but I think staff has a good understanding of what, what's needed, so we can um, discuss after the meeting, Okay, if that's all right. Sure thing. Thank you, guys. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to item six, HPCA 200026 at 443 Northwest 21st Street. This is in Heritage Hills, Ward 6, consideration and possible action on application of John Chadwick, Jr. for certificate of appropriateness to three convert garage doors to single door elective. Uh, this is a proposal to replace the existing garage doors with a uh, single double width garage door um, in a very similar style. We do have the specifications of the door to be installed um, in the opening. Um, it is uh, at a garage that is located um, partially behind the house and also partially behind a portico share. So it's pretty minimally visible from the street. And we recommended approval with the condition that the proposed garage door be painted, not stained, which I believe the applicant has already agreed to. And I think the applicant was going to call in uh, for the meeting, so he may be present. the applicant present and unmuted. Any questions from commissioners? Do we have a motion? Well, okay. Oh, go ahead. This seems to be similar to the previous one. Is there a drawing here showing? Yes. Where is it? There's a picture. There's a photo uh, yeah. at the very back of your staff report that shows the doors that are proposed to be installed. So they've got they've got two sets of four doors that swing outward, and they're proposing to go to one door that is it does it slide? Is that what it what it does, or is it? Does it actually open up? Overhead. Overhead. It's overhead. Okay. Uh, I don't see a drawing of the new door. I see it, a south elevation. Oh, is that is that it? Last page. Alan on the the packet. I think that's the new. Yep, it's a photo. I see a photo. Okay, with the, with the cross bucks on the door. Yes. Okay, the south elevation on page, well, it's not numbered. It's called south elevation. Doesn't really show that design. I think the um, the south elevation was uh, reflecting um, dimensions of the overall opening um, and some other changes that they had initially proposed that they're not moving forward with. So that probably doesn't really need to be part of your attachments. If you look at the page prior to that, it shows the, a photo of the existing door in your packet. And then the last page shows the proposed doors um, and the design of those. So you can disregard that south elevation drawing. Okay, the last page in the packet, that's, that's, those are the new doors. They're, they're uh, already built, is that right? That's just an example. That's not at yep. this garage. 
Okay, all right. <laughs> Sorry, to, I'm so confused. <laughs> all right. I mean, Katie, if the you said that they you've already discussed the paint versus the stain. I'm yes, sorry. they were comfortable with that. They were comfortable with that. Okay, I would make a motion to approve HPCA 200026 items. Item one with the specific findings from staff and the condition as noted in the staff report. I second that. Moved by Joe Meacham, seconded by Linda Schultz. Please vote on Prime Gov. Motion passes. Thank you. Let's see. Moving on to item seven, HPCA 2000033 at 516 Northwest 19th Street. This is in Mesta Park, Ward 6. Uh, consideration of possible action on application by Andrew Thomas for Chris Gray, Prairie Property Solutions, LLC for certificate of appropriateness to one construct addition elective and two construct garage elective. Uh, staff recommended approval for the uh, proposed addition, but a continuance for the garage. Concerns with the garage were largely that it is slightly larger than the um, recommended size for a new garage. And also that the spacing between the garage and the proposed addition um, was not uh, something that would be functional if constructed. Thank you, Katie. Do we have the applicant or a representative for this project present? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Perfect. Great. Talk to us a little bit about this particular project. It sounds like there is some concern with the uh, addition and then how it's configured and lays out on the lot with the, the garage in terms of its size and configuration as well. Okay, sure. Yeah, the um... The original existing garage, which is not there now, there is a slab there, but there is no garage, um, was obviously a little bit different um, size and, and uh, configuration. But what we did was plan for a new garage to be built on the back corner um, of the property line. And I, and, and I think one of the considerations was that the roof overhang uh, and encroach on the rear property line and on that uh, on the east property line so we're more than welcome you know able to move that over uh in inside the property line so that the roof does not overhang or encroach uh the property line and we are also uh willing to uh, reduce the size of the garage from the uh 460 square feet that it is now down to the maximum size which is 450 square feet Mr. Thomas, I did take a moment, this is Angela, I'm sorry, to check in with the permitting office as far as firewalls when you're located on an alley. And um, as far as I can tell from the definitions on page 16, you are not required to have a firewall when you're on the alley as long as it meets the necessary distance requirements. So I think you're good there. Um, but I do have some concerns still that maneuverability between the back of the addition and the front of the garage may be problematic. So not necessarily a, a valid reason to move your garage, but possibly still a good reason to reduce it in size to where that becomes a, a better position to maneuver in with the automobiles. Okay. Well, I think we feel as though the garage was designed, it would be, you would be pulling in all the way in and then you would be pulling out in reverse all the way out. Uh, there might be enough room where you'd have a, uh, the ability for a three point or a four point uh, turnaround, um, but uh, wouldn't necessarily be required um, if you could, if you could get out. You, 
you could park two cars in that garage and the one on the left side could could pull out and maneuver and, and get out. So that, that was just our thinking right there. Any further, you know, if we'd had to move the garage any further from the rear or the side, then you're exactly right. I think it would be, uh, it'd be very problematic. Oh, Meacham, uh, what uh, is it a typo uh, that there's some discussion on arched windows in the garage door? There must be. I noticed that as well, and that wasn't what was shown on the drawings. Um, okay, I, it there. wasn't on the drawing, so I just wanted to make sure. I, I thought maybe it was just a right. And that garage door would also, likewise, if the others had been, it'd be a single garage door, overhead door, carriage. Out where it would look like two original garage doors with uh, hardware to, to resemble uh, two, uh, two doors. And I had forwarded a uh, tear sheet from the manufacturer of that, and I don't think it made it into the packet, um, but uh, I'd be happy to forward that to, the, to staff. The tear, sheet, yes. the tear sheet that I have, Mr. Thomas, is actually what showed the arched windows. Well, yeah, I was looking at it. I it was SQ twenty four and SQ twenty four uh, does not have arched windows. It has uh, it has uh, four separate window panels of uh, four light uh, eight lights each, but they're not arched. Okay, I'm happy to work with you on that. Okay, no problem. Maybe I maybe I sent you the wrong one. Sorry. And maybe I grabbed the wrong set of drawings. <laughs> We had a couple of go-rounds, didn't we? I think we did, yeah. Is there any other staff? What about the height of the garage for staff? It just um, said we, I believe we didn't have a comparison to surrounding garages, but that it appeared to be a kind of comparable height to what we typically see for a one-story garage. Yeah. I believe maybe the only other consideration was um, a rear, it, there was something about a rear facing window, but I don't believe there is a rear facing window either. So, um, but on that side, that east side, we could eliminate that. We don't necessarily need it either. On the south side of the garage, Mr. Thomas, is that the rear? Is that the south side? I'm sorry, I'm not looking at the side plan right now. The north would be the front of the garage with the overhead doors. The south side is the window, and that is the one that I was afraid would have to go away for a firewall. Oh, okay. But based on the IRC, that's not necessarily true. Right, okay. Yeah, that south window we would eliminate. You will eliminate and remove the fenestration from the back wall on the alleyway? Well, if you didn't have, so I, I think I'm looking at this. I may have labeled that elevation incorrectly. I'm actually looking at the floor plan, and I think the floor plan. Um, that I think that's what you did. Window on the west, and I think I just inadvertently put west on the south elevation and south on the west elevation, if you'll excuse me. I think, I think, that, I think that's what happened. If you look at the floor plan. Ah. Yeah. So it was that west elevation. The the south elevation never had never had a does not have a window to begin with. Do I just change the change the uh, title of drawing? Yeah. yeah, that's what I did. And the garage is twenty one feet at that rear wall. Twenty one foot one inches. I think, yeah, I think that's yes, 21 feet one inch uh, outside of outside of frame. Okay, thank you. Thanks. So to me, it sounds like the the garage, you know, as applied for, was originally a little bit too large, and the layout was a little bit concerning. 
to to the commission. I don't know that there was any major challenges with the with the addition, um, but with with uh, the changes that that you proposed and um, some of the modifications, it sounds like we would likely need to do a continuance, in my opinion. But I'll turn that over to our group. I mean, I. I it, if um, I feel comfortable for staff approving the changes on this one, uh, it's just uh, it's turning in the door, uh, reducing the size, and Angela, does the placement of the garage is it going to move or not move? He's going to continue to be in that southwest corner. Okay. And I mean that the final location will be approved by uh, through the permitting process, correct? Yes. Yes. I mean, I would make it. Nobody commented on the addition. I don't I didn't have any comments. I don't think that there's anything particularly troubling about either the addition or the garage. But I did want you to be aware that the combination of the two becomes becomes quite quite uh, tight there. Yeah, I see what you're saying, although if I'm looking at it, it it's kind of hard to see, but it looks like um, where that wall turns in, where that uh, door opening is framed out, that it looks like it's kind of even with that uh, back wall there. So maybe, you know, it seems like you could probably pull out even, you know, the full car length straight out. Um, but it's kind of hard to tell from that side plan. But it is a little tight. Reduce that, that east wall over because we're going to need to reduce the garage by about 10 square feet. So my idea would be to pull that east wall over a little bit and um, make a little bit, you know, deep and a little bit further over. So we should have plenty of clearance. I've got a question about the uh, siding of the garage. It looks like it's right. You've got it drawn right on the property line. Is that right? Or yeah, I do. And that, that was one of the uh, original questions I, I had uh, earlier addressed as far as moving the garage at least a foot in, you know, from both sides, from the back property line and from the side property line, in order to keep the roof from encroaching across. Uh, the original garage was, in fact, I think, built on the property line, on, on, on that corner. That was that was pretty common, but I think uh, the fire uh, the fire code will require that be a firewall if it's on the property line. If it's within, I think it's three feet. Mm -hmm. uh, it has Correct. To, is that right, Klaus? So you'd have to. I don't think you could have a window. I guess on the yeah. west side. At five feet, you can have whatever penetrations you want. I think at three feet, yeah. you're a little bit limited. And uh, and I think the alley side would be okay, actually, because no one's going to build anything in that alley. I think I think you could argue um, well, that, that would be an issue, but the other property line might be an issue. The south side doesn't have a window, so that, that's okay. Right. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the west side, I think you'd probably have to eliminate that window or you'd have to move it over at least three feet. Yeah, I think if it's on the property line, I think that'd have to be a, a firewall. I don't think that you could uh, have any openings there, but I'd have to go back and look at that. I, I believe that's right. So mm -hmm. the zoning, the zoning, I, I think in MESTA allows you to build a garage on the property line. <laughs> there's no, there's no side yard. I know I've built one on an alley. So, but, uh, I, you know, building services too is going to, you know, if we approve this as shown and he takes it to development services to get his building permit, um, you know, if it doesn't work with the, with the city code, they'll kick it back to Katie and Angela, I think. Um, well, I guess my point is but, that yeah. if you have to move the garage, it does change the site plan and alignment a little True. bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have a problem with any of it, except I was just, that's my only comment is that setback. I think it looks pretty good. If we're not approving it, 
one way or another on the setback. That's the city's zoning ordinances and fire codes. And the only thing is, if 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 you move the garage because of the of the city requirement, it'll change the site plan, which may affect right. other things like the paving and other stuff. This is Katie. Um, if it's not at all uncommon for uh, projects like this to get to development services plan review and need to adjust the location of a structure um, just slightly. Uh, when it's a minor adjustment, that's something that staff can handle administratively. If it was a more significant change, we would bring it back to the commission. Right. Well, if the garage moves, say, three feet to the uh, east, the, the doors start getting to be blocked a little bit by the new addition as far as maneuvering space for cars. I think as long as there's not a window on that property line wall, they might allow you to move it over uh, the roof overhang amount, you know? Yeah. So maybe it wouldn't be a full three feet. It might be eight so feet I guess, or two feet or whatever I guess is. I would recommend that, uh, that the window be eliminated on the, the uh, west. So you wouldn't have to slide it over to the west. I mean, east, Come, turned around, sorry. Right. Uh, I think that'd be a better solution, so. Uh, I know you'll find that out when you go to get your building permit, but I'd hate to see that. I would like to see you move the garage to the to the east personally. Make sense? If, yeah, if you, you you would like to see it moved further. Would not. Would not. I'd rather see right. it no, I, and eliminate I it because otherwise it, the, the garage would be more behind the addition and be hard to maneuver into the garage. Yeah, we don't want to do that either. So I can I can tell you if if we ended up having to re to move that over too far to where it was beyond the line of sight on that on that one on the addition, then we would probably have to redesign. So we'll be back. But uh, well, it only it only involved re removing that window. That's the only change. And we're happy to do that, and we're happy to do a firewall over there on that side too. So okay. all right, that's my only comment. I think that would be a a good uh, modification. So is that a motion? I guess it. I guess it could be. I yeah. I move that we approve. Uh, I haven't made a motion yet. Uh, item six D seven with the findings in the staff report. We have a second. Alan, second. did you want that to be a I'll condition second. that the window be removed? And that the garage be reduced to 450 square feet. Sorry, yes, for those two conditions. Thank you. I say, uh, Joe Meacham second that motion. Excellent. Moved by Alan Brown, seconded by Joe Meacham. Meacham. All in favor, please vote. Okay, motion passes. Looks like it's approved with conditions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Angela, I'll shoot that over to you as soon as I can. Okay, moving on to item eight, HPCA 2000036 at 227 Northwest 19th Street. This is located in Heritage Hills. Uh, consideration of possible action on application by Craig Cook, Oasis Fine Homes for Catherine D. Sconzo Blackburn for a certificate of appropriateness to one, extend driveway from Portica Share to existing driveway elective, and two, install fence and driveway gates elective. Um, this is a somewhat unusually configured property where there is a driveway coming in from the cross street at the intersection, uh, accessing a Portica Share, and then a second driveway off the side street accessing the detached garage. Uh, it appears from certificate of appropriateness records that the driveways have been in this configuration since at least um, the early 70s, I believe, and or as early as we have a record of this property. And the garage location and port share are historic. It is a reconstruction of a historic garage. Um, the applicant wants to 
install a site proof fence along uh, the side of the yard and then connect the two driveways um, across that portion of the backyard. Is the applicant or is the applicant or uh, homeowner present? Craig, it looks like you're on mute. There. Sorry, I thought I hit that. You're good. Talk to us about this particular project. Um, so the homeowner would just like to connect the two driveways. Um, the way the driveway kind of curves um, as you come up the driveway, um, it's really not uh, easy, nor is the safest way to, to back out of the driveway to get access back to 19th Street there. It, 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 to me, it, it does look somewhat dangerous. If you're backing out of that driveway, you're kind of backing out, you know, with the tail of your car in the middle of the intersection. Yep. It uh, feels like that is a less than safe environment to do so and, and kind of wrapping that driveway around while certainly unique um, to me it looks like it makes logical sense but obviously I want to check with my fellow commissioners as well. Is that portico chair as it's currently situated large enough to fit a car through? Yes we've had two trucks under there okay. at the same time. Well, I think it's important that the neighborhood has uh, concurred with the staff recommendations on this one and uh, that, that their uh, input to this is that two driveways exist in other areas of the district with this configuration. So s a s apart from for safety, you know, our concern is, and I think that's historic, um, ramifications of that and if it does indeed exist in other areas of the neighborhood and has for some time then I, I think that uh, that eases my mind on that a lot so I'm, I'm fine with it. What about the fence situations or anything peculiar or you know out of line with the, the site proof fence on this particular corner is there anything there Katie or Angela that or other fellow commissioners that, that you all are, you might notice or, or have challenges with. Um, this is Katie. There were no issues with the fence and gate. Um, they, I believe, would have qualified for an administrative approval in and of themselves. We just included it because that gate was um, contingent upon the driveway being approved. So we put it all on as one application. It sounds like uh, I'm good to make a motion if no one has any other comments. All right, I'll make a motion to approve uh, HPCA 200036. Uh, items uh, one, extending the driveway, and item two, installing the fence with the specific findings as noted in the staff report and the condition that the driveway material size or configuration be, uh, oh, hold on a second here. It says to revise. So the um, the only thing on that condition that uh, I think was an outstanding item that um, the commission hasn't addressed was that the site plan shows the radius of the um, pavement at the uh, the side street facing driveway extending beyond the gate, and we discussed with the applicant making that um, paving match the width of the gate. So that you had a little bit of a reduction in the paving there and they were happy to submit um they were going to submit a revised site plan to show that change okay so the applicant is uh okay with that change then uh then i will um include that condition as well and a unique circumstance now we are allowed to put a little bit of a radius there so we can actually make the turn correct yes it was just okay. to narrow it a little so it didn't extend okay. so far beyond the gate Perfect. Okay. Do we have a second? I'll second. This is Ann. Excellent. Moved by Klaus Ryman Phillips, seconded by Ann Zacharitz. All in favor, please vote on PrimeGov.
Motion is passed. Thank you very much. All right, thank you guys. Okay, item nine, HPCA 200037 at 436 Northwest 19th Street. This is in Heritage Hills Ward 6, consideration of possible action on application by Ryan Flowers, Flowers Landscape Design for Bridget Finley for a certificate of appropriateness to one, construct fence screen for AC units elective, two, replace wood deck at south side rear of house with stone and masonry deck elective, three, construct stone and masonry landing at east side of garage elective, five, install landscape lighting at yard, deck, and landing elective, six, construct accessory structure with fireplace and kitchen equipment in southeast corner of yard elective, and 12, replace fence elective. And uh, staff recommended approval for all items except the um, accessory structure, just based upon uh, the size of it. Um, this is all work located within the backyard, and it is um, at a property, as you can see in the slides, that's elevated quite, quite high above the street. So um, most of these items will be minimally visible, but that accessory structure is larger than the garage. So we wanted to bring attention to that. Excellent. Looks like we've got a lot uh, of I items. I believe we have uh, the, yeah, the property owner is on the um, call. It's on the meeting uh, and is available to answer questions. Perfect. Well, thank you for joining us, Ms. Finley. Do you want to talk to us about your project? We can't hear you right now. Are you on mute? We are still not getting any sound. Video quality is great though. Can you hear me now? I can, perfect. Yeah. I'm gonna hang up with my phone and just talk through my iPad. So uh, Ryan is here with me as well. And, and um, you know, we're just trying to make some uh, improvements. One with the walkways, um, you know, to hide the AC unit, to make the uh, house a little bit more accessible. And then in the backyard, just to have a beautiful outdoor space that we can really enjoy with this big lot. Uh, Ryan and I have talked and we're very willing to take the size down of the structure of the, um, um, you know, to make it as the same size as the garage or even a little smaller. Once we staked it out in the backyard, it actually looked too big for me as well. Okay. Uh, looks like, well, do we have any other questions or any other comments from commissioners? So, I would I would comment that there, there's one thing that would probably clarify um, the size and every, for everybody would be perhaps an elevation of the backyard with the two buildings, the front of the two buildings the garage and the proposed uh, outdoor kitchen. I think if if that was a an elevation and we were comparing the, the those two buildings and the heights and everything, I think that most questions would be answered. And and perhaps that if those if that drawing was done, maybe you could uh, see how big you wanted the project to be. Thanks, Joe. I, I appreciate that. And I believe we do have the drawings in there and it would be no taller than the current garage structure. Are they at the very... So we have the elevations of the new structure and it would be no taller than the current structure of the garage. Okay. Yeah, drawing L8. I know there's a, quite a few in there, so... So it shows a height of the existing garage at 16 foot six inches and the height of what you're calling the cabana is also 16 foot six inches at the top of the chimney. Is that right? That's correct. Yes. The, the roof itself is only 14 foot 10. So the roof itself is shorter than the garage height. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. I was, I was told, well, this is Ryan Flowers, by the way. 
yeah. I was led to believe that we needed to try to keep that new structure um, at the same height or, or a little below of the, than the existing garage structure. Yeah, so, uh, so it is a little shorter. Uh, it doesn't indicate the roof pitch on, well, it does on the new, it says 12.6. Is that the pitch of the existing garage? Yes. <laughs> but I mean, we, you know, if it's not, we just match the two. But I mean, I believe they're the same. Yeah, I would think they need to match. Yeah. So it looks like 612, which would be common for a garage. Right. The only other item that I'm, you know, might raise a question to the group about would be, this is just generally, the use of, of stonework versus brick. It feels like we're seeing more and more applications to use stone as opposed to brick in, in these historic you know, preservation areas. And I guess just a question for the, the commission, is that, is that a direction that we want to go? Is that direction we're comfortable going? What are your all's thoughts in particular on, on that item? You know, I kind of feel uh, if it's used like paving kind of, you know, uh, I, I love, you know, stone paving. Um, sometimes I agree, sometimes with uh, like retaining walls and, and different landscape walls, it's almost, um, you know, I don't know, I don't know if this is a fair comparison, but kind of like, uh, like the, if you have a wood garage door, um, staining it versus painting it, kind of the brick yeah. with the, you know, uh, brick versus stone. I, you do see a lot of uh, the brick uh, retaining walls and and it is a nice detail and, and it fits the character of the houses and and they were, so I don't know I kind of I uh, I see what you're saying um, yeah and I feel kind of the same way if it's I don't think any of the backyard are are historic I mean in other words swimming pools and oases and kitchens and you know, my concern with those are that they're not, uh, that they don't, uh, that they aren't a detriment to the, the street view. I think that we sometimes are um, not, I, I think that sometimes we don't pay enough attention to that, particularly on corner lots, because what we're trying to do is to just keep the historic nature of the neighborhood. So, but, backyards that you can't see sort of aren't a problem for me. I mean, I think that we should be real uh, vigilant on walls that are, uh, that you can see from the street that are part of the neighborhood um, character. So that's when I think, uh, Mr. Chairman, that we ought to be real careful about brick versus stone versus modern versus what really matches uh, the time period. Sure. If you have a brick house and a brick garage, and then you have kind of a stone retaining wall, especially if it's like a light stone and a red brick or something, it just really sticks out compared to kind of like you see sometimes. And maybe uh, it'll be like a neighborhood or a block, like just outside an HP neighborhood, and someone will do um, like porch columns, but it'll be like a stained cedar or something. It's just really pops out, you know, um, not always in a, in a complimentary way, I think so. You know I mean, Jim, I would agree. I mean, it would, um, I don't, I don't know if it, if it's, um, if, if you use the guidelines, if, if using, you know, doing this kind of design is uh, acceptable, I would just say that, I mean, I think that it, it is harder to justify this kind, those kind of materials and everything fitting into a, um, you know, fitting in with the historic house over time. I mean, today it's, I mean, it's one of those things where I think sometimes some things are more of this time period, but maybe in 10 years, they might not match the historic house as well. But I, I don't know if, if the guidelines actually prohibit, um, you know, changing materials in the backyard. So. I agree. I, th I mean, break in my opinion, you kind of can't go wrong with brick. It's kind of timeless and it'll still look uh, appropriate and, and, you know, 10 years down the road, you know, so. I've got a, you guys 
I, I, I would just, we look, we talked about doing brick, but the concern is, is we could never match it. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought that would look worse than a contrasting material that it would look purposeful being non-brick. So, you know, just so you had some insights on our thoughts. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. Mm -hmm. I have a question for you on your plan, the overall plan L2. Everything that's shown uh, on there to be built new, that uh, some are uh, crosshatched, some are not. Is everything on there uh, stone? Uh, in, this is Ryan Flowers again. In the backyard, yes, everything that's crosshatched is, is new stone. Okay. The, the columns? The columns on the cabana are not, but they're yeah. on veneer also. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And in the, in the front, the only stone we're doing is that gray uh, and just a little bit of edging where there's a little bit of a gray change on the bed, but it's not. Not it's, visible. It's not, it's not like, it's not very, it doesn't protrude up very high at all. It's and a gray, basically. On, on the front of the house, uh, those are new. That's a new uh stone wall on this either side of the porch or not no okay it's there's, there's no there's no stone walls in the front it's just the stone walkways from the driveway to the existing sidewalk and then from the existing sidewalk around to the uh the mailman steps yeah on the front oh. of the on the front of the house that the, the those those low walls are shown crosshatch. That's what got me. Going. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's that's graphically done wrong. I should. I, I, it's existing. That's there. There's there's nothing new going there. That's all. That's existing. Existing. That's a brick. That's a brick. Uh, basically, brick wall. A brick wall with the existing porch. It's just it's, it's right. not being changed. So are there? I'm looking on there. Is there are there new sidewalks in the front of the house? Yeah, we added it. We added an option C on. If you look in your packet, it's L. I'm sorry, I'm trying to find it. It's the very last one. It's on L11. Oh, okay. And that basically, it's just carrying that. The, right. That I don't think would. I mean, it would be my. My thought that, that uh, new sidewalks in the front would have to be concrete. We usually don't uh, let uh, sidewalks in the front yard be a different material. People have asked for like brick sidewalks and uh, is that our, your understanding, Katie? Um, so this is actually, that item is not on the agenda. Okay. That's been pulled out as a separate item. Um, and I think uh, we did actually um, come to something that we could administratively approve addressing the walks at the front of the house um, and the grade change that they were trying to address. Um, and I can share that with the commission after the meeting, but for the purpose of this meeting, those items in the front of the house are not on the agenda. And they're not gonna be stone. So um, I will have to check in the, um, I think there's stone edging involved, which we typically allow for things like landscape beds, right. et cetera. So, Katie, the uh, everything on the front of the house is not is not in the application. Uh, I believe that's correct. We've got the fence screen for the AC units. We've got okay. the wood deck at the rear. Um, we've got the landing at the east side of the garage, which is in the backyard. Landscape lighting in the yard, and the accessory structure and the fence. So yeah, none of the stuff shown on the front of the house is up for consideration at this time. Well, that's, that'd be a lot of discussion. <laughs> well, you do bring up a valid point about uh, matching brick. That is, uh, it is difficult um, to find historical brick that, that you can match existing brick with and not make it, you know, so I do recognize that that is a a concern. What other items do we have questions on as commissioners? 
And if no other questions, do we have a, a motion of some sort? Well, uh, as I understand, there's general uh, agreement on reducing the size of accessory structure, what's called the cabana on the plan? Yes. Okay. So we'll need a new drawing on that, new drawings. Um, so the staff report uh, recommends continuing that item. So would we approve the other, other? Um, Alan, uh, this is this is Bridget. Is there any way we could agree to reduce the size and provide you that drawing? And and if so, I heard at one of the other meetings just so you wouldn't slow us down on the <laughs> yep. construction. Could we? Um, do it this handle it the same way. What do you what do you guys think? It's kind of a major element in the backyard. It'd be the same concept, right? So have you already decided how large it's going to be? Do you have an idea? We'll match it to the garage. Yeah, we'll match it exactly to the garage or you know, an inch or two smaller. The garage is the garage. This is Ryan Flowers again. The garage is 19 feet eight inches by 21 three. So I would, I would say something like 20 by 18. Yeah. And it was shorter, correct, than the garage, I believe. Yes, the height be wise. Yes. The height. The height is. Did you say Ms. It, it's it's at the height of the garage or shorter to pit the chimney on the fireplace is at it. Everything else is shorter. Yeah, I think what you'd shown is like 14 trying to find it 14 six or something and the garage was a little bit taller. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think I'm comfortable with that. We just kind of did the same thing. <laughs> so. Um, and re regarding the landscape walls, it looks like on that, um, let's see, that's a west elevation between the garage and the house. That existing fence is staying. So really the backyard is pretty much screened anyways. Is that correct? As far yes, as- Yes, it is. Yeah. So that's less concerning to me as far as the material for the, uh, for the stone landscape walls. You know, if it's kind of like Linda was mentioning, if it's like, uh, you know, like a corner lot with a with a retaining wall or something around it. You know, that's that's uh, different than having it in a backyard that is more private, probably. So I I don't think I have any issues with that on this one. Well, I mean, other than once again, I mean, we sort of get ourselves in this position because we are proving things we haven't seen, um, and and that. That's an uncomfortable place to be going forward. Not a good precedent to... And, and there's no such thing as precedent in this anyway, really. Um, but I, I am very sensitive to the applicant's uh, perception of, of that. And I, um, I mean, I think on outbuildings and, and, and the neighborhood is asked that we see a revised plan uh although we we haven't mentioned the neighborhood comments um so you know I, I struggle with approving things that we haven't seen any plans for sure. this is um, ryan you have the ability to approve the this is katie uh to approve um all items on the application that everyone's comfortable with and continue the accessory structure to the June 3rd meeting, which, which would perhaps to... give them the ability to get started on some items and then come back at that June meeting with a final design. Yeah, and I'd hope that they could- More comfortable with that. That, 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 that because it's a uh, so I would... building that won't hold up the sort of general progress, at, at least a 30 day progress, uh, to get back with us on the accessory building. And you guys, um, you know, working with Ryan on part of the construction, you know, when you pour concrete, it's cheaper, quicker, easier if it's poured for everything. If you do stone, it's quicker and easier if it's all done. So 
theoretically it wouldn't slow us down, but it, it really does. Um, you know, when you're trying to organize a project and coordinate it. And um, I mean, I, I will comply and I wanna be a good neighbor and, and a, you know, friendly partner in this. Um, but I think you have the structure. I don't know if even on those plans we can, if you feel more comfortable writing 20 by 18 foot, we can update the plan, send them to you tomorrow. Um, I want you to feel comfortable. So I don't want to, you know, I don't want to get you out of your comfort zone. Yeah, I think for for my purposes, you know, the, the neighborhood was a little bit concerned with the with the kind of the grand scale of it. Um, I, I know I've heard some concerns from fellow commissioners about approving things that we haven't necessarily seen plans for. I would be in favor of approving some of the items and then doing a continuance uh, potentially for the June 3rd meeting. Hopefully that wouldn't slow the project down too much, allow you to continue to, to keep it moving and also to uh, give us and the neighborhood and you know, everybody else involved a little bit of, of confidence in, in the process too. I'd support that. Joe, you're, you yep. uh, maybe a compromise would be that um, uh, that maybe we could compromise on the footprint so that they would know the footprint and that they would have to turn in the design. I'm comfortable if the footprint is the same size as the garage or smaller. So if it's going to be that, you know, then that would hopefully let them go forward. Uh, the design would... isn't going to be different necessarily. It'll be the same material, same overall character, details. It's just going to be smaller. I as mean, far as I, I, know. I, I would like to see the final drawings, but I, I, I would go forward. I, I would make a motion to go forward if we, if the, if the footprint is going to be the same size as the garage. I don't know, Bridget. If you, if the, is that the size you all are going for? Yes, and it might be a foot even smaller. Okay. Uh, but but yes, and, and that would be a significant help, Joe, if we could, just so we could get some of the footings board and some of the other things. And, and we're happy to revise the plans and send them in. Linda, would that be a compromise we could go forward with? I'm gonna say, like, what's your compromise? That they have to hold the, they have to, that they can go forward with the footprint if it's the same size as the garage footprint or smaller, but they have to come back to the next meeting with the final drawings. The final drawings are just in the elevations, right? Yeah. Right. And a fl new floor, I mean, it'd be a new, um, you know, it'd be a new site plan and an elevator. But, but by then the site plan will be fixed because the foundation will be poured. I don't see. Yeah, you know, I don't understand. At that point, you wouldn't be able to change much. I, I'm in favor of approving this with, uh, with the cha changes being made and submitted to staff like we've done previously. The concept will be the same. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think that compromise would do a whole lot personally. Or it would it would fix it, and I don't see the point of submitting drawings later. Then, so that's just me. I don't know about you guys. Uh, well, they would still have to submit drawings to Katie and Angela to um, confirm that what they're doing matches what we would uh, kind of add as a condition. To their architectural, architecturally, it would look just like it does now, but it'd be smaller. I I don't see the problem with that personally. I don't either. Yeah. I think I'm comfortable with that too. And then the neighborhood association was concerned with the size and if it's condensed, then I think it, it helps the, the cause. Well, they were also concerned with the style. Do y'all have their nut letter? Uh, or, but, I mean, I only say that as a point of clarification. Yeah. Not to overly complicate this, and I don't know if this has been done in the past, but you know, if there, if there are specific members in the neighborhood that are concerned, have you ever, um, made a condition on an approval for example this one to say you know same design but smaller and then allow 
um, the concerned parties to comment on it. And if, you know, almost like a uh, appeals period or something. And if they say, oh yeah, that's fine. It's smaller, looks good to me. I don't have any, any issues with it then staff can approve it and continue on. And if the neighborhood says, you know, uh, I'm still not comfortable with it. It's not what we had in mind. Uh, you know, could we hear it at the June 3rd meeting? I don't know if that's been done in the there's past. Already that, a process, uh, there's already a process set up for homeowners to, uh, to coordinate their uh, projects with the neighborhood re uh, review committee, which is only a rec a review and recommendation committee they have no power right uh, but that they they're already set up to do that for homeowners prior to submission so uh, i mean we wouldn't it would be too complicated yeah this is katie right. um yeah we don't have an ability to um, tie an approval to any sort of review or comment by any entity other than the commission um, right. either it's approved with specific conditions that they'll coordinate with staff or it's continued and it comes back to the commission for additional review. Uh, we can't uh, can't tie it to, you know, some individual party or a neighborhood uh, weighing in after it's been approved. No, that makes that makes sense. That'd be too complicated. Yeah, and but probably we not legal. The neighborhoods, we ask them to do part of this work for us. We ask them mm -hmm. to be um, helpful to uh, the neighbors and in, in these projects and provide input in terms of their experience and their knowledge about the historic uh, preservation standards and guidelines. I mean, they are not, they are important to us and they live there. So. Sure. Uh, I mean, I, I would just comment that I think some of this is a larger issue in that uh, I think the commission, there's always people on the commission that feels like they're being pushed to satisfy an owner's uh, desire to start their project. And so sometimes that I think, uh, so it's not just this project, it's just, uh, you, you know, being, feeling like, you know, we're approving things that we, that we, you know, didn't have, that we would like to comment on and see the final project that somebody wants to start. So I think in this time with, uh, because we've had to delay projects and so forth, I think that we should go forward, but I don't think that we should in the future. We always need to remember that we need to get the best design and, and, and if we have to continue it sometimes at the discomfort of people that, you know, we have to do that. But I would, I would go forward with this one. Uh, Alan, maybe you make the motion on what you're thinking. Yeah, well, I, cause I, I really think it's something that's the concept is the same. And it's pretty clear what they're going to do. So I'll make a motion to approve uh, uh, six item six uh, D nine with the, uh, findings in the staff report and the uh, condition that uh, the uh, size of the accessory structure slash cabana uh, be no larger than the footprint of the garage uh, and that the, the, the height shown on the drawings be no higher, that the uh, roof pitch be the same as the garage and that drawings that show the Proposed design be submitted to staff for approval before proceeding. How's that? Sounds good. I think that, yeah. that's good. Who wants to second that? I'll second. I'll second. This is Aaron. Go for it. Or you can. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who's going to steal it this time? Okay. Moved by Alan Brown. <laughs> second by Ann Zacharyts. All in favor, please vote. Motion is passed. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. I, I really Thank do you. appreciate your um, wanting to keep the neighborhood historic and all your attention to the detail um, very much. Thank you for your time. We Thanks a lot. Thank you. Mr. Okay. Jordan, yes, ma'am. I need to uh, step out for a quick meeting. Uh, if it doesn't affect our quorum, I'll be back in about 10 minutes. Okay. 
Katie, does that, or Angela or, or uh, Rita, does that affect quorum at all? It does not affect quorum. We'll record it in the minutes that Ann um, stepped out of the virtual meeting at 424, and then we'll um, record when she returns. Perfect. Maybe we could take a five minute break while she's gone. We haven't. I, I'm comfortable with whatever direction you guys want to go. Ann, I thank you for the, the notification. Um, well, how many, we've got four items left. Um, what, what do we want to do in terms of a brief break? We can yeah. take a break and uh, nobody log out of anything. Don't touch your computers. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll come right back. <laughs> Be back in five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Time to check in. Oops, I touched my computer. You're fired. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> yep. Maybe mute yourselves while we're on a break, folks.
All right. Okay, five minutes is up. <laughs> Okay, we are um, going to do a roll call to just reestablish that we still have quorum. Um, I think Jennifer is going to start that here in a moment. Sounds good. Can everybody hear me? Can. Perfect. I would like to proceed with calling the roll. Taylor Fudge. Present. Klaus Roman Phillip. Present. Alan Brown. Present. Mary Jo Meacham. Present. John Milner. Present. Linda Schultz. On mute. Present. And has Anne made it back on the call yet? Mr. Chair, you have quorum. Excellent. Okay. So we are moving on to item number 10, HPCA 2000040 at 2605 North Robinson Avenue. This is located in Jefferson Park, Ward 2, consideration and possible action on application of Josiah Cockcroft Integrity Real Estate Solutions for certificate of appropriateness to one install shutters required. And this is an application for uh, the installation of shutters on a house that we don't have any evidence that there were shutters historically. It is a brick house, um, so one would expect to see some sort of um, attachment or you know markings on the brick where shutters had been installed previously um, with guidelines that uh, the guidelines do not support installing shutters that were not there historically so staff has recommended a denial for this item and i don't believe i saw um, the applicant on the call for this item um, but we may have someone from the public who wanted to speak okay do any citizens wish to be heard or is the applicant present Doesn't sound like it. Thoughts, questions, concerns from fellow commissioners. Guidelines do not support the application of shutters. Uh, recommended denial and no evidence that shutters previously existed. So to me, it seems pretty straightforward, but I want to follow up with you guys. And support. Any, when the, when the, have you all had contact with the, the owner? We have communicated with them um, and they received a copy of the staff report. Um, I'm not aware of whether they were going to try to, you know, make any further case for the installation of shutters. We have at, at times in the past continued items rather than deny them if the first at the first meeting the applicant was unable to uh, present their case. So uh, it might be appropriate to continue this to June 3rd just to give them an opportunity to speak. And, and what would they speak? How would they change that? that is in supported by the guidelines? I, I think the only thing that they would be able to provide is if they had some evidence that shutters had been installed at one time on the house. I mean, quite frankly, um, this is in my neighborhood and I've walked past it uh, several times. Um, I mean, even if there are shutters beforehand, I don't think the shutters they installed would have been ones we would have approved necessarily. Um, but. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I believe it's a uh, someone who's I think the house is on the market now. So I, I believe they're trying to sell it. I don't know if that affects the decision making in any way. Um, but uh, yeah, I would agree with staff comments on this one for sure. I would too. Well, we're going to continue it. I will move we continue item 6 D10 to the uh, June meeting. 
Do we have a second? I'll second. Well, guys, oh, I'm sorry. If if um, I mean, if everyone feels confident that there were not shutters historically and agrees with staff comments, then we can we can certainly Just deny move forward with a denial. And we can work with the applicant after that if they want to pursue other options. I think we could give the applicant an a, 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 a opportunity to attend the meeting. Um, well, they've had that opportunity, in my opinion. So it, it, it's like just making more work for both part for both us and them when we're, they're not shutters that we would approve. Just pushing it down the line, kind of in effect. I mean, it's just make work. Sure. Well, Katie, uh, did they indicate, or Angela, did they indicate they had any information, additional information? No, I don't believe they provided anything else to show that there would have been shutters. I mean. Okay, all right, I agree if everybody else does, I'll withdraw all my motion. I'm certainly, I'm, I'm certainly comfortable with the denial, although to Katie's point, you know, giving them the option, they've had that option, uh, it's been there, but uh, you know, I, I don't like the idea of just pushing this down the line and, you know, having to revisit it later if, if uh, well, that was my terribly important. That was my first thought, so I'll go with my first thought. I, I move that we uh, deny, <laughs> I deny item V, V6 D10, item one, with prejudice. That's like right that. Does prejudice mean that it cannot be heard for another year? It means, yes, it means that it cannot return um, for another year unless they present a new documentation or some sort of revision to the application. Did you move that? Alan, okay. yeah, move, move that. Do we have a second? I did. Okay. Linda Schultz. Moved by Alan Brown, seconded by Linda Schultz. All in favor? Please vote on PrimeGov. Whoops. Yeah. The motion to deny is passed. Moving on to item 11, HPCA 2000044 at 627 Northwest 15th Street. This is, um, sorry, consideration and possible action on application of Alexander Weeks for certificate of appropriateness to one replace fence and gates elective. Uh, this is a proposal to install a fence at a corner property uh, that is, had a couple, there were a couple of reasons that we couldn't administratively approve it. One is that I believe it is um, too close to the sidewalk. We have guidelines requiring a specific setback from the, um, I'm sorry, the proposed location in the side yard is consistent with the criteria for new fences. Um, the proposed location abutting the sidewalk is not consistent. So it is not set back off the sidewalk the way the guidelines require. There is an existing fence that is in that same location, but it's not a historic fence. Um, and the other um, thing we wanted to make sure the commission had the opportunity to review is the design of the fence, which is a more modern uh, horizontal fence design with multiple, uh, two different colors of stain. Um, and we've, we've talked at many meetings about the design of fences and them being uh, fairly um, easily replaced features that come and go and not necessarily something that is a historic feature, but at a corner lot with such a prominent location, we want to make sure those fence designs don't overwhelm the historic character of the property. Uh, Maya, uh, oh, let's check in with citizens to be heard or, or applicants, are, are there in the app, is the applicant present or are there citizens to be to be heard on this particular item? Yep, this is Alex Weeks, I'm present. Perfect. Talk to us a little bit about your fence concept and what you're wanting to do. So the primary purpose here is just to replace an old fence that uh, started to fall down and uh, has rotting posts. Um, the uh, design we chose was um, we just we just picked one we thought looked nice. If you guys have a different opinion, uh, we're we're happy to do whatever you want. Um, that that's not important to us. We're mostly interested in, and just replacing it so it doesn't uh, fall down on the sidewalk someday. 
The um, as far as the setback goes, it it is aligned with the property, uh, with the wall, the permanent uh, stucco wall that uh, exists on the property to the north of us. So it it aligns north on uh, yeah on Lee there, um, and so it you know it I personally think it would look odd if it was set back. Um, here you go. That's the yeah, there you go. That little that white post right there is the uh, stucco uh, brick stucco wall from the property to the north of us. So I think a setback, at least my personal opinion, would would look odd uh, there, and it'd be a place for debris to collect and leaves and and uh, and all that stuff. The other thing that uh, I don't know if this matters to the commissioner, or not, but we've got established vegetation, uh, flower beds, trees. Sprinkler system, electric box for the uh, electric gate, and and all that stuff that would have to be moved two feet um, as well. And then it's hard to see in this picture, but there is a tree. It's probably eight or you can actually sort of see it in this picture. There's a branch that comes over the fence over the sidewalk there. That tree would either that branch would have to come off, or the probably the whole tree would have to come out to to move back. Uh, to move that fence back two feet. So most, yeah. most, go ahead. Go ahead, I, I thought you were finished. One, one other issue, there's a walkthrough gate that we don't have a good picture of here. It's just actually right, if, if you could see to the right of this picture, uh, right about six inches out of the frame here, there's a walkthrough gate. And if we, the fence moves back uh, two feet, there's a step, you can't see it in this picture, but there's a, a concrete in the sidewalk, inside the yard, there's a step and that would require the walkthrough gate to open outward uh, and block the sidewalk when it's opened. So we can, it opens inward now, but if the fence moves, that gate's gonna have to open outward. So that's a synopsis of my thoughts about moving it uh, two feet. Perfect, thank you. Commissioner Schultz, do you have a comment? So you're not opposed to continuing it and bringing it back with a new design that is more historically accurate, is that correct? Absolutely. The design is, we're just interested in replacing the wood and, and the posts. The design's not important to us. Okay, so we can kind of pass that one and, and I guess discuss the uh, distance from the fence. Is that right? So then that would be what we would be left. Distance from the sidewalk. I mean the sidewalk, yeah. Okay. Um, to me, the yeah. Go ahead. But I was going to say the, the fact that it lines up with the with the the stucco wall that's that's you know kind of in that sight line to me this makes sense. Would I like to have it pushed back? Probably, but based off the other circumstances that are on the property with the electrical box and the flower beds and the trees and the vegetation and the other the fact that it's lining up well, I, I'm comfortable with with where it's placed. I'm not comfortable with the design. Um, so you know if, if I guess I, I would say modify the design and leave the fence in its in its place, uh, but that's my own personal opinion. Well, I think the design of the fence can have a big impact on that because I, I walk down that street a lot. And, you know, what, it, what is happening is that the entire, sort of the entire field of the neighborhood is changing with big fences that are right up against the sidewalk. So there's not that same sort of um, historic feel about uh, if, you're, if you're on your feet, doesn't matter if you're in a car, but if you're on your feet. And, and, you know, I think that if Mr. Weeks is that amenable to working with the staff on a design that's historically accurate, I think that will also make a difference in how um, and kind of the visibility and the and the and the feel with it being that close to the sidewalk. I just think there's probably ways that you can minimize uh, it feeling like you're walking past a, a, a building, a wall. a wall. If I may, mm -hmm. um, this is Angela. I don't believe that there is an historically accurate description of a fence for this property at any location that staff has access to. The existing fence was proposed in 1997 prior to the guidelines being 
written as they currently exist, um, a new fence that exactly matches that particular fence would have been a, a fence that staff would have administratively approved. The only reason the fence is currently before you is because of its location two feet closer to the sidewalk than one would um, find recommended in the criteria and because of the very modern design proposal that is before you. This is a new trend, much like our existing stockade fences with cap and trim were a new trend 30 years ago. They are well established in the neighborhood at this point, but that does not mean that they are an historically accurate description of the historic character of the district at any time prior to that. The property owner has indicated one stain choice and one access choice for the posts. Beyond that, it is, the top is horizontal, it is level, it is six feet tall, it is wood. Um, we, we can't recommend an historically accurate for this location because we don't know what it was. Okay, point taken. So if he replaces that fence, the only the only requirements for distancing it from the sidewalk is the historic preservation guidelines. It's not, there are no city codes. There are none that I'm aware of. Okay, I just want to be clear on that. I don't, I don't see how we can make him move it back. I mean, I, I, I'm fine with putting it back like it was. I mean, that's not Mr. Week's fault. Mm -hmm. It'd be a shame to lose all that nice landscaping on the other side. You can kind of see uh, a lot of work was put into it. So yeah. yeah. Does it the, do the guidelines support replacing an existing fence with, with a light design fence in the same place? Yes. The, that's done. The guidelines would support any type of fence, including a horizontal fence. The only reason it is before you per design is because this is a new trend yeah. that we have been bringing to you as staff when they are located at corners only, not interior lots, but because so of the put, visibility. So you would approve any fence, in, in, any design, any fence, any color, any... And you would, in, that's narrowly saying that all the rest of the guidelines don't matter, that the historic character of the neighborhood and, you know, none of that matters, just this very narrow, we can approve any fence. The Joe Meacham, I mean, we have approved some fences that I, I some horizontal fences that I did Same. not did I, I did not like. I do not like, I don't think, and the reason being at that particular meeting, which has been about two years ago, was that a fence can be replaced. But in the meantime, it does not fit the neighborhood. And I mean, I under, I, I, I mean, I, I think it's great that the you know homeowner is willing to do something different. I would not be in favor of the proposed fence. I don't think the horizontal fence is appropriate. We don't really have a. I mean, historic fences would be either you know they match the house originally or their wire fences or something but i mean okay, yeah the wood fences are just you know i mean they're pretty um you know they everybody has them and they're just kind of a neutral fence i would be in favor of you know replacing it it could be somewhat different if he has a new design right. but similar to what's there a you know similar to what's there i i wouldn't yeah. have him move it it it's been there too long to yeah. Is it a motion? I, I would make a motion, but I, I we he still has to present a but he could do that to staff as long as it's a Correct. vertical fence that is similar to other vertical fences in the neighborhood. I would be uh happy to make a motion for staff to approve the final design. Would that work, Katie? Yes, that's fine. So, uh, approve with the condition that uh, final design of a more typical horizontal uh, vertical fence be submitted to staff? Yes, that would yep. be my motion. Excellent, okay. do we have a second? I'll second. 
Moved by Joe Meacham, seconded by Klaus Ryman Philip. Everybody, please vote on PrimeGov. Okay, motion passes. Enjoy your fence. Okay, super, guys. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Moving on to item number 12, HPCA 20-00046 at 1519 Class and Drive. This is located in Heritage Hills, Ward 6, consideration and possible action on application by Thad Jennings, Jenko Roofing for Karen Napier for certificate of appropriateness to two replace asbestos roof at house and garage with composition shingle approximating existing roof appearance elective. Um, we uh, have a house that has asbestos shingles on the roof. Um, we are not entirely certain of the age of the asbestos, but obviously that's an older historic feature. We also know that it has wood shingles underneath the asbestos, which is presumed to be the original roofing material. The applicant would like to replace the roof with a product that looks more similar to the asbestos uh, than to a wood shingle. Um, and has proposed a product that has a similar pattern but is um, smaller than the asbestos shingle. So um, uh, the question before you all is both uh, whether the asbestos is the appropriate product to be replacing um, as the historic roof material and then whether the proposed shingle is comparable enough in uh, design to serve as a replacement. Um, and just a kind of refresher uh, when someone has a non-historic roof, roof material, like a composition shingle, um, our guidelines are more flexible on the roof material that goes back. Uh, when you have a historic roof material still in place, then the guidelines um, say that those materials should be replaced uh, in kind or with something that approximates the historic material. Sort of a two-question. I think question. we have uh, both the homeowner and the, uh, her representative on the phone. On the call. Hey guys. Hi there. So it's sort of a two question, maybe it, or is it sort of a two question issue? Do we, do we, do we think that it needs to be put back to wood or do we think that the asbestos is, uh, the asbestos shingles uh, constitute a historic kind of pattern? And if they do, and that's what we want to go with, can we use this newer pattern that's a little bit smaller? Is that kind of where we're at, Katie? Yeah, that would be accurate. Well, who wants to weigh in first? I think we have some. I would just like to hear from the homeowner on how they, uh, you know, it sounds like they did some research. So I would just like to hear what they found out when they started looking for a material. Well, I'm Thad Jennings, Genco Roofing. I'll, this is Karen Napier. Uh, I'll speak, speak to that question. So uh, I've done quite a bit of roofing in uh, the historical areas and have worked with material like this. Uh, the asbestos shingle has been on her house for many years prior to um, 1969 when uh, her property was zoned histor a historical landmark. It does have the wood shingles underneath it from the original install of the, or the build of the house. Um, the house was put on the National Register in 1979 with these shingles on it. And the problem is the asbestos shingles are no longer made. They were actually started, uh, were fabricated, manufactured in 1920. They stopped production in 1970 due to asbestos lawsuits and people dying with asbestos um, in their lungs. Um, the product is no longer available. Uh, if we were just talking one or two shingles, that might be a possible repair, but the fact that this is over wood shingles she has multiple leaks in her house and in her garage. Uh, currently, the insurance company is 
way waiting on your decision on what direction we go on this before they can finalize their claim to Mrs. Napier. Um, my professional opinion is that the house and the garage roof need to match in fabric material. Um, the, everything else on the house and the detached garage match currently. Um, it, the, both layers have to be taken off. The house has to be redecked with a 7 16 OSB decking board. And then the, any material can be put back on this. Um, GAF uh, used to make a shingle called Sienna, which is a pattern very similar to this, but they quit making those back in June of 19, uh, 2019. So those shingles are not even available. We just installed those shingles uh, that we were able to locate uh, back, uh, back east on the wall court building uh, over off of Broadway Extension. And that was the last of those shingles. In fact, we barely had enough to cover that roof. But originally, Mrs. Napier wanted that shingle on her house. Well, they no longer make that. So I did some research and the product that you have in your packet is called Cascade. It is a diamond shaped pattern, but it is smaller. But it fits the design, meaning it, in my opinion, it matches what's there now, which I, be, I believe that these are more historically correct than actual wood shingles are. Um, and it, it's, it's gonna be, I've looked at uh, metal shingles that I can get back, back uh, uh, up in Utah, but there are five times the cost to put on this product, on, on this project. So the composition um, material is uh, much like the composition material in the neighborhood. It's fiberglass, uh, has a lifetime warranty on it now, but the design and the shape are very similar to what's on the house. So that's why I propose that to her, uh, the wood shingle, uh, the GAF uh, timberline shingle is throughout the neighborhood, but it doesn't match what this was uh, uh, classified as historical back in 1969 and 1979. This was the product that was on the house. So I'll, I propose that for the house and the garage, and I just need you guys to weigh in on that. Um, situation. Mr. Jennings? Yes, ma'am. The, the question appears to be the size of the diamond pattern. So my question to you is, is that size diamond pattern available in a composition roof that's satisfactory to Ms. Napier? It, you, it, no longer is it made. Uh, GAF, so talking made about? Yeah, GAF made it's called Sienna. It's the shingle that we put on the wall court building. And it, the wall court building had this product on it. Gummerson and Associates was remodeling that building. And I checked with GAF to see if we could get that product anymore. And they checked their database, their, their suppliers, any leftover material. Not only is it not available, they quit making it back in June of 2019. Well, so not, that, that product's not available anymore. Well, I'm not saying that exact product. I'm saying a product with a larger diamond design. I mean, are there, are there not, the, the neighborhood says that that is available. Now you're the roofing person, so I'm, I'm not disputing you. That's why I was just want to be clear that she cannot get a roofing with a larger diamond design because you're talking right. one supplier and I don't I'm not a roofing expert so is that right that is correct I've checked with multiple suppliers ABC Willards okay uh, spec uh, crossroads uh, ABC is a nationwide uh, supplier and they have access to all types of materials and all of them reference back to the GAF Sienna that's no longer made and they all reference me to the cascade, which is the diamond shaped pattern. Okay. So 
that is the only one available right now that match that even comes close to this pattern. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I'm definitely in favor of replacing with the diamond shaped pattern just because I think that's a really cool architectural feature. I know it's it's uh, there's several houses in the neighborhood that have it. Um, and I don't know that I would necessarily say you got to go back to the wood or anything like that. And the fact they don't make this particular product anymore, um, as kind of told by you, Mr. Jennings, um, I would be comfortable with the smaller diamond pattern just to kind of replicate as much as we possibly could. The old, um, the, you know, I, I would consider both roofs historic. So uh, to replicate, you know, what you can on the historic or historic side of things. Um, Jennifer, Katie, do we need to do anything now that Ann is back? You know, officially bring her back into the fray? Um, we did see that she had returned and we will record that in the minutes that she's um, back in the meeting. So that's yeah, my I didn't, opinion. didn't that's want my to interrupt opinion. the proceeding. So, yep, perfect, thank you. So that's my opinion on the, on the roof. I would agree, oh. I, it sounds like, that's why I ask, uh, uh, it sounds like Mr. Jennings and, and uh, Jenko has a lot of experience and if they've worked on the other historic building and pursued this product, I mean, there is a limited, uh, uh, I mean, there's a limited um, different kind kinds of uh, roofing products in the United States that, I mean, there's, it, they're not, they're not hiding out there, I don't think, uh, certain unusual roofing material that, you know, some people can find and some people can. It sounds like Mr. Jennings had to do research initially with the wall court building which uh he is you know would have happily tried to get that product if it was available so sure. i mean i i'm, I'm going to depend on, a little bit on his experience too and say if this is the product that most matches the roof that i would be inclined to agree that this would be the product that i i would be in favor of well can i ask the staff on this recommendation you wanted to continue it, but what would they find? Um, I think uh, Mr. Jennings has largely addressed um, what those concerns were, just providing the information that he has about additional research that he's done. Okay. Um, you know, we always want to make sure that we've um, pursued every possible avenue for the best um, product to approximate a historic feature. Um, I, what I did confirm with GAF as well that they do not make that Sienna product any longer. So we'll need to all lobby them to start <laughs> making that again because it was such a good match for the asbestos um, shingles. Um, I have not further researched the other options that, that he spoke about, but it does sound like he's um, done some good research into what's available. Okay. Well, I agree that this pattern is as close as I could get. We have a uh, one other thing. We're just trying to make sure that the that uh, because this is a historical property on any historical property, it's my professional opinion that the house and the detached garage are similar in design shape, not just with the roof, but all the other materials. We're trying to get the insurance company to agree that the garage, the detached garage, is is uh, has to be replaced because she's got a tarp over that garage right now and currently even though this is not the uh, HP's problem they're trying to deny that they're going to do anything to that roof on the detached garage and so my opinion is the house and the garage both need to match and my fight's going to be with the insurance company but they're going to go heavily off of what you guys what your final decision is on this thing. Do you want us to, our uh, decision to reference if the house and the garage be the same roofing material? If yes. That, if that's. <laughs> if if yeah. that, I'd be happy to make that recommendation <laughs> too. I, I so, think that's um, the right me, thing to do. This just say, sorry, this is Katie. Let me just say that because um, we've we've I've talked about this with the applicant that um, our guidelines do not require a house and a garage to match each other um, unless they match historically. Um, the historic roof, a new roof should match the historic roof. So if the garage had a different roof, then we would, the guidelines would support them continuing not to match because they do match 
um, replacing each of them with a product that matches each of their respective historic roofs is appropriate. So uh, I just don't want to put words in to a, the commission's decision that make it sound like there's a requirement that there actually isn't. But there is a requirement that when a historic roofing material like asbestos is replaced, it be replaced with something that approximates the historic material. And that applies to the house and the accessory building. So the, the garage did match the house, is that right? It does, yes, yes it does. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, that, that answers that question. I, I uh, move that we approve uh, uh, item 6D13. Um, with the finding in the staff report. And since the uh, garage and house had the same roof that that uh, be required that the same roofing material be used uh, for the project. Thank you. Do we have a second? I'll, I'll second. This is Ann. Okay, moved by Alan Brown, second by Ann Zacharitz. All in favor, please vote. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks for your patience. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, last item on our cases for individual consideration, number 13, HPCA 2000050 at 509 Northwest 17th Street. This is in Mesta Park, Ward 6, consideration and possible action on application of Allen and Angela Smith for a certificate of appropriateness to one, construct garage elective, and two, request recommendation on BOA 14746, a request for a variance to allow duplex use and garage apartment. Uh, this is a proposal to construct a uh, two-story garage. Uh, there's currently not a garage at the property. And then also a request for a recommendation to the Board of Adjustment um, to um, allow a, the property to function as a duplex and to have a garage apartment. Um, staff has recommended a continuance for the garage um, based on guidelines that do not appear to be met addressing the size and, and general design of the structure. Um, and uh, to speak to the variance and the duplex use, the applicant has provided um, numerous photos of the interior of the structure showing that it has a mirror image uh, floor plan on the inside. Um, however, we have uh, sandboard maps and other records that don't ever indicate it was uh, duplex. So some questions there for the commission to evaluate on whether that was, whether that is a historic condition that, um, should be supported as part of the historic character of that property or whether that is not um, the historic or original intent for this structure. Thank you, Katie. Do we have any uh, citizens or do we have the applicant uh, that wish to be heard? I think we do have the applicant on the line as well as uh, at least one uh, member of the public. Excellent. Let's hear from the applicant first. And if you all don't mind, just tell us a little bit about your project. That'd be great. Sure, great. I'm Alan Smith. This is my wife, Angela. Um, so our, and first of all, let me say as far as the documentation that, that everybody's asking for, for the garage apartment, we absolutely agree with that. Uh, I know there's been some concerns with the size of it. And so we absolutely agree. And if, if we could actually move that, I think uh, July 1st, I believe is what you said was, uh, it's, it's like two, two meetings prior, and that will give us the opportunity to have the architect, and I believe he's on the line as well, to uh, come up with, you know, plans that, um, you know, you know, we'll, you know, we'll basically make everybody happy. I mean, that's what, uh, that's, that's our, our ultimate goal there. So as far as, as the duplex part of it, um, prior to purchasing the house, I actually went to the zoning office and asked them hey is this a duplex all that kind of stuff and they they even gave me two addresses they said absolutely it's, it's got two addresses 509 511 um, if you see the property and you go inside you can absolutely see that each side is an absolute absolute uh, same um, 
you know, same image each side. Um, and so when we purchased the property, that was our, our intent is to take it back to its original uh, historic, um, use. historic use. Yes. And um, so anyway, that's, that's, that's kind of where we're at there. I mean, our, our goal is to, to obviously, you know, to live in one side of it and, you know, you know, to rent the other side out. And uh, I will tell you that, that, you know, we, we plan on staying there the rest of our lives. I mean, you know, that's, that's our, that's our uh, house forever. Um, you know, we, we love the area over there and, um, you know, we just want to make sure that, uh, that, you know, the neighbors are happy, that we're happy and that, uh, you know, we just, we want to be right, so. Uh Alan, uh, this is Alan. <laughs> yes, sir. I, uh, so you want you want to convert the garage to an apartment? Well, there isn't a garage there now. There isn't anything there. I mean, you want to you want to uh, build a garage apartment? Yes, sir. So you we want, want to, you want a duplex for the house and also a garage apartment? Well, and the reason that we're asking for that, and I don't. Uh, We've got family. I mean, I've got parents and all that kind of stuff. Yes, we would actually like to rent the other side of the other side of the duplex out, but we would actually like to build a apartment over the garage specifically for it. it's, you know, you know, it's not so much, you know, to rent it out as it is family coming to stay, kids. I don't know. I've got five kids. So, I mean, we've got, you know, five teenagers coming to stay with us, you know, from time to time, stuff like that. So that's, that's part of the reason we wanted to do that to start with. So well, historically it was a duplex, but there was not a garage apartment. That's correct. Yes, sir. Well, do we know that it, I mean, it says we don't have, and as far as the Sanborn maps, it's always been a single family dwelling. It, it says that, but I, I mean, if you look at the inside, it was designed as a duplex. The other is if the post office has two addresses, mm -hmm. I mean, Sanborn maps a lot of times were done by people walking down the street. I mean, they didn't necessarily go in. This doesn't look like a duplex, but if it has two addresses. I don't see how that can, uh, I mean, how is that not a duplex if it's had two addresses in the in the past? Well, I guess it, it's not a duplex if two families didn't live in it. Well, I mean, if you if you bought a duplex and you and you put your family in both sides, that doesn't mean that it's a single that it automatically turns into a single family residence. Well, is it, it divided be. inside? What? But it's not divided inside. It's divided inside. There's just all they've done is cut two holes, one on the first floor and one upstairs to go through to the other side. There's two kitchens, two bathrooms, two. It's identical. It's basically a mirror image. I don't know. My in laws had the house has two kitchens and it's. But that, but anyway. Is someone able to pull up the drawing that I sent in so that you can see? Um, it was in it was in these files. When you walk in the front door, there's a vestibule and there's two entryways right in there. And then you go into a living room on each side, a dining room on each side and a kitchen on each side. And then there's also a staircase up the middle on each side that takes you up to two identical hallways upstairs. I don't doubt okay. it. Sorry, is this right Angela Smith? Yes. Uh, okay, I, sorry, I didn't have, um just wanted to clarify who was speaking. Thank you. Yeah, I think right here you can see the two entryway doors once you come in the main yeah. entryway door. Now that that seems pretty uh, clear cut to me. Um, so really, you're just maintaining the building as it is, um, you know. But but you need it declared a duplex for board of adjustment purposes, I believe. Yes, sir. We could. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yeah. We might be able, from a, from a design standpoint, I think the biggest thing is it's got two addresses, but yeah. my point is it doesn't have three. It's only got two. Yeah. So, uh, 
But so, so is there any evidence of a garage ever existing there or was there never a garage at that location? Yes, sir. There actually was a small garage and I don't, I, I haven't seen it on here, but um, it was actually on the site where the, uh, where the concrete is now. Um, mm -hmm. And it was just a small, what I believe, two car, single story garage there at one time. Yes, sir. Okay. What? Is the uh, applicant wanting a continuance though till July? Well, we would like the continuance on the garage and the garage apartment because some of some of you know the neighbors have some concerns about parking. Okay, and I absolutely understand that. I mean, street parking. Shoot, you know, there's several um, several areas over there that there's a lot of street parking and um, we don't want to park on the street either. And we want to make sure that we don't have cars from our house parked on the street as well. So we have a, have an architect that has, you know, drawn the plans for the garage apartment, but we want to make that smaller. And then we would like for him to also have plans for parking back behind the house so that, uh, you know, we basically make sure that we don't park in the street. So, I I don't think I'd be in favor of a garage apartment. Yeah. But uh, so, what do you want today? Uh, well, we can't. We would like the house to be turned back into a duplex. However, just just I mean, that's that's what we're asking for today more than anything else. Turned back into. <laughs> well, to be to be considered a duplex um, with the historical. You know, society. So we can, um, this is Katie, we can provide a recommendation to the Board of Adjustment on the variance and continue item one construct garage um, and craft great. the uh, the comments of the findings in that recommendation for board, board of Adjustment, however, the commission sees fit. I mean, I don't, I don't see how we can, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't, keep, I don't, I don't see how we can forward it saying that it's historically been a single family when the floor plan and the address indicates that it was a duplex. I, I mean, I, uh, I, I, I mean, I know that the neighborhood wants things to be a single family, but I mean, it's even it the case. And everything is not really our situation and we can't make a final determination. I mean, I don't, it's really kind of hard to even make this recommendation because there's nothing on the outside that we can really say, but I mean, I mean, I support, I support, um, I mean, I would make, I don't know how we'd make this recommendation, but I, I agree. I mean, it, the physical evidence of the property suggests that it was a, a duplex. And I think to say that it's a single family residence, you know, my case kind of starts playing with, uh, you know, we're almost trying to, you know, you manipulate what was historically there, you know. Uh, right. It's historically there, though. I mean, just the, what the neighborhood is saying that is for the past 30 or 40 years, it's been a, used by a single right. family. And well, there are multiple, there are many instances in the historic neighborhoods where people have gone in and repurposed all kinds of houses that have been apartments they've gone to one single family and single family have gone to they you know they've it's moved around so it, it to me it's like not not how many kitchens it has but how has it been used i mean how has this house been i mean that's just recent history though i mean and what difference does it make really in the end i mean there's duplexes in the neighborhood i mean it's a prejudice towards a single family. I, I don't really see that you can stop people from using something that was, and we're not even going to do it. It's not our say so. It they have to. It goes to the board of adjustment, and they make the decisions. I understand that, but then why does it have to go to the board of adjustments if it's a simple matter? You just move two families in. I think it's because uh, of our current zoning law. You right. know, we kind of blanketed neighborhoods as R one or R two, regardless of what was there historically or not. So if this house was a duplex at one point, but then at some point we said, you know, uh, when we updated our zoning code, whenever that was in the seventies or eighties, and we said, everything's R1. But we did uh, that for a reason, Klaus. We did that so you couldn't put a liquor store beside them. 
Okay, sure, but at the same time, that's not historical. I mean, then you would say like all of Paseo is not uh, legal because there are shops next to houses and there are aplexes next to so single family. It's a whole houses. other discussion. Historically, a lot of the residential areas were more mixed. I mean, right. Edgewater has. Well, and, and I think that's fine. I'm just that, saying that's, that it has just... a duplex and it, and it doesn't has an effect in the neighborhood. I would say personally that we. We say something along the line of comment on things like the address, but also that it appears that the, the structure historically uh, was a duplex and that uh, most of the, of the architectural uh, features of the, of the, uh, are, are uh, preserved and existing and uh, would support the fact that it uh, should be considered a duplex. That's what I would say. Something like that. I think that's worded. I think that's good. And the I don't think we have any. I mean, uh, what we can say is not that it was historically used as a duplex. We can say that it, at some point was. I said. I said, Lynn. I said it appears to be. That's that's my legal. We don't know for sure, okay. but it appears to be it was a duplex. It's designed as a duplex. It, uh, and the addresses. Existing features mm -hmm. uh, are still there that would allow it to be a duplex, and it has two addresses. Everything. The, the only, the only thing that makes it not a duplex is the fact that it's got one door. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you can have a you can have a door coming in, and then it splits off. Sure. Two, right? Yeah, I, I, I guess I, I'm saying I agree that it that it does appear to be have been a duplex in in its past life. And how it might affect the neighborhood. I'm sorry, but there, are, like I said, there are duplex and multifamily in historic areas, and that's just the way it is. I don't want to say. This is Katie. Uh, just to um, clarify the the nuances of why this, what this is asking for a variance from, is that uh, there's a provision in the code that if you had a um, historic non-conforming use and that use has lapsed for two years or more then you have to go back to what the current underlying zoning is. So if it had if it had been a duplex and had remained in use as a duplex up until now, it would be legally non-conforming. Because it has not been a duplex within the past two years or more, um, they don't meet that requirement. So when they went to get permits for interior work, they were told you're going to need a variance um, from the Board of Adjustment to go back to that duplex use. So the variance is specifically to vary that two-year cutoff um, with the assumption or um, the understanding that historically it was a duplex, just that it's been more than two years. And I do think um, something that we always include in our recommendations to Board of Adjustment, but that we failed to include in the staff report was a comment about whether or not the variance would result in a change to the historic fabric um, resulting in review by the commission, which in this case, it doesn't appear that it would because there's not exterior work involved in the proposal. Um, that's just something we might want to address because typically that's what we are focused on when we make a recommendation to another body. And it's required to go through us first? Yes, the ordinance um, says that we are, we are supposed to provide a recommendation to other bodies uh, that are making decisions affecting properties within the historic district. Anything else from the homeowners, Mr. and Mrs. Smith? Um, you know, the only other thing that I would say is that, uh, you know, we, and I understand that there's some, you know, concerns about the people that have lived in the house. And I guess for the last 30 to 35 years, there have been two different owners and we actually met the two owners. So, you know, we understand and they actually lived in it as a single family, obviously. Um, but, you know, it, it had six bedrooms, two living rooms, two dining rooms, two kitchens, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so just the, I think part of the reason it took them so long to sell the house was, is, is that it's hard to find somebody that actually, actually, actually needs all that. And uh, so that's the reason that we actually purchased it to take it back to its previous and original use. Perfect. Thank you. Any uh, citizens that want to be heard? Randy, I see you there. 
Looks like you want to say something. Can you hear me? I can. All right, Randy Ice, Heritage Hills, 119 Northwest 19th Street. Uh, Heritage Hills is opposed to this. Uh, there are literally dozens and dozens of houses like this in the neighborhood. They were converted into rooming houses in the 60s. We went through the HP zoning to downzone them back to R1. We believe this house started out as a single family house. We don't believe that three different Sanborn map surveys would lie. There, they, they, three times they did that. It was a single family house up until the 1950s. Somebody came in, added an extra kitchen, probably made it into a rooming house. That's what happened. Then later on, it went back to single family. We believe this is single family. We believe if you approve this and if the Board of Adjustment approves this, this jeopardizes all the other big houses that were chopped up into rooming houses, many of which have multiple addresses, just like this one. Because back in the 60s, they would give you extra addresses and you'd, you'd get all these odd addresses on these houses with the, 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 you know, the, the half number or the lower rear or upper attic or, or all kinds of odd things. That happened in here, and we've been fighting for years to stop it from happening again and not to reverse this trend. So Harry Chills is strongly opposed to this. We've written a letter to the Board of Adjustment. We would like the HP Commission to basically ratify what we believe is the accurate statement by the Sanborn maps that this was built as a single family home. Everybody knows it's been single family for the last 30 years. We, this period in the, in the 50s and 60s was difficult for this area. And a lot of things got, got done that shouldn't have been done. And we've been working for years to bring it back to the original. And that's, that's our position. I mean, my, my response to that, Randy, would be um, that uh, the, the interior uh, trim, the kitchens, the kitchen sinks, the design, the, the, the doors, the hardware, the, the trim around the doors, I mean, all says to me that it's, it's all from the date of construction. And I, I just don't, I don't think that there was a big change in this property. I think it was, a, it's the interior is original and uh, the Sanborn maps, they made mistakes. They did millions of houses all over the United States and they just copied what they did the first time. So a lot of times if they miss, if they missed it the first time, they just copied it the second time. So I don't think they're, they're not a hundred percent reliable. What uh, yes, we have to, to the Smiths? Uh, what what are the addresses you've got? Five hundred nine and five eleven. So they're not weird addresses like halves or anything like that. That's a pretty typical two yes. number difference. So I think that kind of supports Joe's point about architecturally. It appears to have been a duplex, and I still think that. Well, he, I mean, I think that what Randy's saying is it's that his that what is historical keeps slipping around. Uh, no, I, I, I'm, I, I'm disagreeing that it was changed at some point uh, from a, a large single family house to duplex. That well, but, ar architecturally, the interior seems to have been done originally as a duplex, and it has two separate numbers that are standard, not some weird number. So I, my point is that I think it was always done. It wasn't like some of the ones that were converted back in the 70s or whatever. And, and to the applicant's point, he spoke with both previous owners who lived in it for over 30 years. And both of them, they lived in it as a single family house, but it still had the same interior configuration. So it was a single family yeah. dwelling, just like well, the they lived in it as a single family dwelling, but the arrangement was as a duplex, uh -huh. you know? So to me, I mean, I- They must have liked to cook. They had two kitchens. All right. So I, I don't know, I, I agree, I think, um, to me, it, 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 it's a well-designed duplex, quite frankly. I mean, I could, I could see a Sanborn map technician going by, looking at it, seeing the one door saying, okay, single family house and yeah. moving on. You know, I, the two addresses, the, the interior configuration, I agree with Joe. If you look at the trim, the details, that looks like it's been there a long time. So uh, yeah, I think I support um, a recommendation uh, as we've discussed. And Joe, I know you're a kitchen designer and you'll be happy to know that we're keeping the old sinks, we're keeping the old cabinets, um, we're keeping everything that's the old charm. Well, power to you. Uh, it, it really, I mean, it does appear, I mean, I've, even, I, I've seen those sinks, uh, uh, well, not very much anymore because you basically, you're looking at a sink that's over, you know, that's almost a hundred years old, in my opinion, uh, you know, I mean, there's, but uh, 
anyway, that that's just my my thought on it. I we're not the final word. I just think as far as his history, the history of the house, that um, they deserve to go before the board and have the board discuss if it should be uh, what the use should be. That's we're not the final word. So I no, would make. I, I tend to. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I would just make a mo. First, I'd make a motion to. Uh, can, can we hold off on that motion? I know there's a couple other citizens that Have want to be heard spoke? on. Okay. Yeah. So I think we saw Stan Lewis and Katie. I don't know if I'm stepping out of line here, so correct me if I if I am. But uh, I saw him waving his hand. Well, I just thought I'd. Yes. Go ahead. I've, I've been I've lived next door to the house for 30 years, and we have friends in the neighborhood that had lived here back in the 40s. And they tell me in the 40s that house was lived in a single family dwelling. So it goes back not just 35 years, it goes back to 70 years, it's been, it's been single family. I have no argument that it was, it was designed originally and built as a duplex. The design of it was laid out that way. But for the last 70 years, it's been a single family. <clears throat> not just 30, it's been over 70 years that way. It is the only duplex in the neighborhood. And as far as two addresses go, there's not two numbers on the building. Never has been. It's been a single numbered building for 75 years. And uh, that's all I really wanted to say. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, Joe, I, I didn't mean to interrupt your, sounded like you were getting ready to make a motion and you're on mute currently. Yes, I was just going to make a, I was going to make a motion to, um, this is in, in uh, regards to the, I'm going to make two separate ones in regards to the uh, continuance for the garage apartment. So um, I make a motion for HPCA 20050 item, um, excuse me, item one. Item one. Uh, to continue uh, the that the construction to construct the garage to the uh, July first meeting. We have a second on that. All second. Moved by Joe Meacham, seconded by Klaus Ryman Phillip. All in favor, please vote. That motion to continue has passed. And Joe, did you say the July 3rd meeting? Is it the J July 1st? July 1st meeting? Okay. July 1st, yep. Excellent. Okay, how about the recommendation? Uh, well, I will make the motion. Uh, I make a motion to for uh, HPCA 20-0050 item three, um, to recommend to the Board of Adjustment for a variance to allow duplex use with the specific findings that the interior arrangement of the duplex of the of the of the building appears to have been a duplex and that um, there were at one point uh, addresses assigned to uh, two, two addresses assigned to the property and uh, to add that uh, a change uh, would not necessitate any changes to the exterior appearance. Could I ask one thing I, in your motion? Was it to recommend? Recommend. I was wanting a board forward, meeting. forward. I don't know how you. It, these are always difficult to say. How would you like to say it? Well, I was just wanting. We are, just, we are forwarding a recommendation to the board of adjustment, and we'll get that language right when we send that to them. Um, okay. I was going to ask: Did you want to specify that it appears to have been a duplex historically? That's what yes. not just at one time. Well, it appears to be right. Right. I mean, the information provided to us would be one that, uh, you know, photographs on from the inside, uh, to me, indicate that it was originally built as a duplex, and two, that the owner has uh, received information from the city of Oklahoma City, I think that's what he said, that there were two addresses associated well, with the property. What I wanted to say is, this to me is kind of like when the city asked for our opinion about a demolition. 
we don't make the decision on it. Right. No. We're, we're supplying facts, Inform information, and our opinion. So to me, we're saying that it appears that it appear that it was designed to be uh, retains all the features as a duplex. Um, blah blah blah. But I. I don't think we're recommending that it be designated a duplex. Well, That's no, we're opinion. recommending that it be forwarded to okay. the adjustment. Okay, I just want to make that clear. Yeah, yeah. I just it's it's how the that's how they the staff wrote it to request a recommendation to the BOA for a variance, but we are just recommending we are we are just we are requesting that this be forwarded to the board of adjustment for consideration consideration yeah consideration based well, on our findings okay i'm good okay i know that's tough oh and i'll second that excellent moved by joe meacham seconded by alan brown all in favor please vote That motion is passed as well. We will forward that recommendation on to the Board of Adjustments. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, so that's everything that we had in our cases for individual consideration. Um, item number seven, other business. Uh, we were to receive a report, uh, sorry, HPCA 19 705 Northwest 27th. And Katie, I won't steal your thunder there, so. I'll I'll be quiet. Sure. Yep. This is just to receive a report from Todd Harlan Castle Enterprises Incorporated, including photographic update on brick condition. This was a, a project where they um, sandblasted and painted the brick, and the commission asked the applicant to um, do some repair work to that and to report back uh, on how that turned out with removal of the paint. So there's no action required here. It was just providing you all with that um, follow-up documentation. Um, we have, I'll kind of keep going through the end here. We have um, lots of administrative approvals listed and staff can um, follow up and answer any questions about those after the meeting. Um, and a couple of withdrawals that typically happens when someone just determines not to move forward with the project or application is never completed. Uh, nothing else to report under administrative closures, city council or board of adjustment um, on April 9th. Planning Commission adopted Preserve OKC as an amendment to Plan OKC. So our next step for that is to go to City Council. That will be um, coming soon in a few weeks. And we'll let you all know when, um, when that's going to City Council just so you can follow that process. Uh, and then nothing to report from Ad Hoc Committee to identify potential landmarks. Excellent. Rita, anything from the Municipal Counselor's Office? I'd just like to welcome John Milner. It'll be a pleasure to work with him again. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Welcome, John. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, sorry about that. I meant to say that under items from staff at the very beginning. I usually acknowledge when we have new members. So again, welcome, John. It's okay. This was a big agenda, so we need to cut corners where we could. <laughs> this big agenda with a new format. That's for and uh, I would say so. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Two, Two crazy leaders. Okay, let's see. Item I, next meeting date, um, Wednesday, June 3rd, 2 p.m. I'm assuming that will also be online and not in the council chambers, but I will wait to see where that goes. Any other items from commissioners or citizens that wish to be heard? You didn't mention the workshop. Oh. Know. My bad. Uh, we also have a workshop uh, Wednesday, June 10th from 11.30 to 1.30 at 420 West May. And again, I don't know if that will be in person or online, but uh, there is a, a workshop for the Historic Preservation Commission. And we'll keep you all posted on whether that's going to occur and if it's going to be via video conference. Excellent. Any other items from commissioners? I wanna say, well done, everyone, Taylor. <laughs> it was a marathon meeting today, that's for sure. The staff, uh, I guess you guys pushed up the system by a couple months, right, to get it working for us? 
Uh, yes, we were. Uh, the plan was to switch over to PrimeGov to use for our meetings and our agenda and uh, meeting prep uh, in the next several months, but they had this tool available to use for video conferencing. So we, um, there was, has been lots of hustling and training and yeah. uh, Zoom meetings and conference calls to get this worked out so that we could continue to have meetings and keep projects moving ahead. Well, that works. It's amazing. Out great. It's amazingly yeah. easy and and I know that you guys must have been working. I mean, a lot of people had to have been working really hard, sure. really long for this because to put it together this quick, it was just, please tell them that we, mm -hmm. I thought it was just- I think it went good. Easy. I was, so, just, I was apprehensive about how everything would go. And uh, I think I think it was a smooth meeting. So- Yeah, I did too. Yeah, I did too. Good job. A good job all involved. Okay, any citizens to be heard? Got a couple left on the line. Unmute if you would, if you wish to be heard, and if not, uh, do we need a motion to adjourn, Katie? I can't remember. Um, no, we just uh, declare the meeting adjourned. I you declare the meeting adjourned. Yeah, I didn't get a gavel. <laughs>